so listen, before we start this episode, I've got to tell you this, yeah? Ages ago, we did an episode, I think it was me and Koi, and we was talking about skincare regime and whatever else, and I just started my own little journey with it. I was one of them men who was using the same thing like that I washed my body in to wash my face with, and I was using the same cream that I used to like rub my body with to rub my face with, pause, if that is one. But you know what? I got a, um, a delivery maybe like a week later, and it was from Temple, yeah? And I think one of the things that stood out to me already was self, whereas right here it says self-care for the man them. And I was like, yeah, okay, all right then, let me see what's going on here because I was using one of them other little brands there. And honestly, yeah, when I started using this, I, I honestly did not stop using it. Like this is literally my favorite skincare product. And what is extra sick is that they are now on board with us as sponsors. So even though I would do this anyway, and I told people this anyway, it just makes it so much better that they are sponsors. And now I'm, it's another brand that I can now tell you about, which I actually use myself. My favorite things to use is definitely the daily moisturizer and the, um, the facial cleanser. Sometimes I use a toner and that and whatnot, but listen, you can kind of work it out for yourself. All the products are vegan as well so it's vegan products too and it and it isn't just for the man them women can use it too now here's where we're about to bust you right we by using our promo code can get you 15 percent off if you're going to go to tmpl.care and you're going to buy like one thing for example yeah now you can get 15 percent off by using a promo code however they do have a method where you can like get a delivery every month right and if you go for that option you automatically get 15% off. But if you use the promo code, you get an extra 15% off, which makes that a total of 30%. So yeah, listen, I don't care what skincare regime you're using, yeah? Try this one. Go to this website and use our promo code, get 15% off, and then just let me know how you feel about it. Like, let me know what you think. For me, I love it. Like, even the one of the things that I like the most as well is not even just using the facial stuff, yeah? But it's like, later on in the day, my face still feels mo moisturized and it still feels like... You get what I'm saying? It just, there's, a, there's an element of gloriousness to it. I'm not going to cap and sit here and say that my skin wasn't good already, but it just adds to the goodness, yeah? You try it for yourself and then let me know what you think. Anyway, enjoy this pod, I'm not gonna lie. This one, see this one here? So, there's so there was some point back in time where there might have been life, but there may not have been any consciousness. Some, if, if you were to play music on, at such a slow speed, it might just sound like one note being held for a long time. No, well, no, no, hold on, because the, the experience of absence is not the same as the absence of experience. But what does, like, what does psychedelics tell us about consciousness? A few years ago, we measured the level of consciousness in psychedelics, and it's, it goes up. It's like above waking. I, I'm, I'm good with the end of life, but I am still as interested in why being feels like it feels like, like why existing feels like how it feels like. And is is existence, this uh, experience, is there some truth, some like, some uh, like some uh, holy truth to this feeling, if you know what I mean? Is there some real truth to this feeling of mm. existing and experiencing, or is it an amalgamation of everything going on in my brain? What's going on, everyone? Don't usually do intros. This actually isn't an intro. It is an intro. It's, it's not an intro. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> it's not an intro. You you still kind of jumped in on the conversation, but this this one, this, you've jumped in obviously like at a time when we we're just talking about something light, yeah. But this is not a light one. This is actually just not even a light one. How deep and is I'm this conversation so going today? I need to know from now. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I'm so gassed. I could not even lie to you. I'm so gassed. Now let me just give some context, yeah. By the way, JME's with us, everyone. No, thank you for having me again. Right. Time ago, I feel like more time when we speak on the phone, we go down bare rabbit holes yeah. all the time. Yeah. What, I don't know if you even remember this. I got, you, you phoned me one day and you said to me, yo, if you're ever having a conversation on consciousness, ring me. And I was like, why? Then you're just talking about some conversation you had with your dad or whatever. And you just randomly just said that, yeah? And I thought, yeah, do you know what? Right, yeah, like uh, that's banked. But that was time ago. And I always said, I'm gonna get somebody to help me with 
bringing interesting conversations to life. Yeah, that took a little time, but I got someone, and she's actually here with us as well. Sheila, thank you. I do appreciate this. This is your work. Yeah, <laughs> so I appreciate that. So anyway, we sat down. She talked. She messaged me. She said, "Yeah, like I, I think I can do it." Blah blah. blah. We had a, a, a nice little conversation, and then at that conversation, she was like, "Well, what's the first conversation you wanted to do?" Then I said, "Ages ago, Jamie messaged me, and he said to me." that if there was ever a conversation about consciousness, he wanted to do it. So let's see if we can do that. Straight away, maybe two days later, Sheila hits me and says, I got somebody. I said, what's his name? She said, Anil. <laughs> Anil is with us right now. How are you, man? <laughs> um, um, it's great. It's lovely to hear the origin story of how we're all sitting in this room. Right. You don't normally get that. No, no. But I do also want to just add a little bit to it because, I mean, there's more to you than just the name. I hope so. You're a guy. You're like, you're actually really doing stuff. You're one of the leading scientists in the country, I believe, when it comes to consciousness. Yeah, are you going to be, are I'm you going to be like, like well, yeah, modest. No, I'm working, I've been, basically, it's the only thing I've ever really done. I mean, I'm doing it for about 30 years. So, jeez, it's, uh, it's been a long road. But Why? Because <laughs> it's, 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 it's one of the most fascinating questions I think we have. You know, I remember as a kid, I don't know about, about you guys, but when I was very young, I looked in the mirror of my, the bathroom in my parents' house, and I remember looking at the mirror image of me and just for the first time thinking, you know, at some point I won't exist anymore. Right. And when you have to, and I think we, we've all got to have that realization at some point, and mm. then all these other questions start coming, like where was I before I was born? Why am I me, not somebody else? And we often get educated out of asking these, these questions, yeah. these deep questions. But somehow they stayed with me. And after doing you know, lots of different things at school and so on, um, I remained interested in trying to understand really what these questions are when you come down to it, which is we've got this, you know, this incredibly complicated biological machine inside our skull and out of that, somehow, there is conscious experience. Mm. The redness of red, the, the, what music sounds like, it's not just pressure waves, there's an experience yeah. of listening to music, which is why it matters. And then fundamentally, there's this experience of, of being a person, of being whoever we are, being me or being you. And it, it's this, I think it uniquely combines something that's still not well understood in science or philosophy and a mystery that's deeply personal. It's not like understanding black holes or mm. quantum mechanics or something. And consciousness is so central to all of our lives. And when it goes awry, when it goes a bit wrong, you know, we have mental illness, we have psychiatric disease, we have dementia, we have all sorts of things. So it's also a mystery that, that matters for, for how we live in society. So yeah, I just feel very lucky to be having a career exploring these questions. There's a bunch of things that I'm gonna bring up yeah. today <laughs> that we're all going to discuss and talk about yeah. here but before I do that and we had a sick day before we even filmed <laughs> before, before oh, we yeah, even yeah, did yeah. this we had a sick day we yeah. went and uh, we went to a, um, something called the dream machine I was so pleased you could make it to that yeah 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 and we will talk about that a little bit later but the first thing I actually do want to ask you is yeah is that from my perspective it seems like scientists and philosophers have different takes on what they believe consciousness is. Is there anything that you both agree universally? I think finding universal agreement is, is never going to happen. Right? And that's, that's one of the, the beauties of it. It's, it's a productive, continual argument and disagreement. But science, you know, what is science? Science is basically the ability to change your mind based on some evidence somehow. And philosophy is how to think clearly. And both need each other. Philosophy without science is a bit lame, it doesn't really go anywhere, and science without philosophy is blind, it doesn't know where it's going. Mm. So for these questions, you, you really need both. I think there is something that most would agree on, um, which is a definition of consciousness, which comes from a philosopher, and he says, for a conscious creature, there is something it is like to be that creature. You know, it feels like something to be me, it feels like something to be you, but you know, the sofa, it exists, but it doesn't feel like anything mm. to be a sofa. 
and it doesn't feel like anything to be a, be a phone or a laptop computer. So that's a very simple definition of, of consciousness. And it's also what goes away if you, if have, have you, have you ever had general anesthesia? I'm just thinking like, about what if I was to be this up as well. <laughs> to <laughs> be now, go on. What say? I'm, 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 I'm sidetracking. I'll remember this. I'll come back to it. Have I ever had general anesthesia? Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah, I have. I had my appendix out. Okay. I had my appendix out. What was? Do you remember what that was like? I remember waking up. Do you remember the bit before? Yeah, they were counting. I remember. They were, I remember they were pushing me down the corridor. Yeah. And counting. And I was saying, just like we have to go into the dream machine at some point. Just like I said, when we went to the dream machine, it's not going to work on me. Right. I said that then. I, I, was, I must have been like, how old would I have been? 11? Oh, so you was young. Yeah, I was young. I was like 11, 12. I might have been a bit older, you know. I just remember it was Meridian. So it was at North Middlesex Hospital. So I would have been, I remember moving into Meridian Walk. So I, I, I had to have been between 11 and 15. And I remember them pushing me down the corridor saying they're going to count. Oh, I've got to count to that 10. I can't remember what they said to count to, but I kept saying to them, we have to choose a higher number because it's not going to work on me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this kind of, this kind of worked, thing. I do, all I remember was being lying down and walk, got, getting taken to wherever it was, daytime, and my mum was with me and was going. Then I was, the next thing I remember is just sitting up and thinking, oh. Exactly. I'm thinking, well, what time is it? Because... I don't want to make noise in here in case I wake up people in this ward because it's night time. But I want them to know I'm awake as well. I want them to know I'm awake. Can I go home now? Is my mum here? Like, what? You know what I mean? But I can remember that. I can remember sitting up. And that's it. And I, I, don't, I don't remember the nurse coming to get me, telling me my mum's here or go back to sleep when my mum come in the morning. Or I don't remember anything. I, I just remember, this, I definitely remember get, sitting up in that bed and thinking, oh, a bit of pain. I remember that. That's Before I even go into mine, I want you to still like keep going on where you was going with the Anastasia because I I, I I had this in my notes as well where it's like and I don't I don't want to sidetrack here, maybe this might have been something he was leaning into, but it's <laughs> like there's clearly something different, massively different in regards to that and sleep. Yes. Because well, I had it what, two years ago? No, three years ago now when I had knee surgery, yeah. They've given me the injection. And then the woman told me count. And I remember as I'm counting, I feel so awake. And then within maybe three or four seconds, I felt so tired and I just, I just knocked out. Yep. But then I just woke up. The difference being though, was that like, I always remembered that obviously when you, when you go to sleep, you, you wake up and you just know, rah, like you've had some type of concept of time a little bit. Yes. That might not be massive, but it would be like, Right, I've been sleeping for a little while or whatnot, and it's like you look at the time and you're like, okay. Sometimes you might look at the time and think, oh shit, I didn't realize I was sleeping that long. But more time, you go to bed and you wake up a certain time and you're like, cool. With with this, yeah. you have no concept whatsoever. Like you're so surprised at what the time is, whether you feel like maybe you were sleeping for a lot longer or a lot quicker. It's like or a whatnot, glitch. But it's just a yeah, it's a glitch, That's isn't the thing. it? It's, it's oblivion. I mean, this is the, I, I'm really glad you, you put it that way because this is this is the point I would try to make because often there's this idea about anesthesia and often people will tell you this when you're going for an operation or something they'll say you know you'll go to sleep for a bit mm. and you wake up and we'll have finished but it is not the same as sleep at all and the difference is exactly that in sleep most of the time you're still having some kind of experience whether it's a dream or some sort of imagery or something but fundamentally you know time has passed when you wake up might be confused if you're jet lagged or whatever but under anesthesia you are gone and then you are back and in the middle no time seems to have passed at all right your your kind of personal timeline joins up from the moment you disappear mm -hmm. to the moment you return on the other side and in the middle it could have been five minutes it could have been five years it would have been the same for Feeling. you yeah and that is that's so interesting because that's that's like i found it when I was reflecting on it, because I've had it a few times, and of course working in this stuff, you think about it all the time anyway, that it's a bit like what it must be like to be dead mm. or to not have been born yet. Mm. You know, there really is nothing at all. And it's quite reassuring because in that absence of anything, you know, there's there's no suffering. Yeah. There, there's there's just there's just nothing. There's no feeling. There's, there's no, no feeling. Yeah, there's no feeling, there's no emotion, there's no 
So there's, there's no, no use. What is there's no it experience. Then? But then what was, is it? I was gonna say this, yeah. You're breathing though, ain't you? Because there's, there's no yeah, breathing. breathing. There's no breathing uh, apparatus on your face or anything. Oh, no, no. It's just normal, isn't it? You're breathing. Well, it depends how deep it is. Sometimes they they have to. But, but yeah, you can. You're, you're alive, obviously, mm. because you can return. And but it it just turns consciousness off and only <coughs> turns on again. So obviously you're still aging. Like your your body's still working. Yeah. I'm sure if they were to like make a part of your body cold, the hairs in your arm will stand up or something. You know what I mean? Things they could test on yes. if, you're, if your body's still functioning. If your brain's still telling your body to function correctly, if you know what I mean. Like regulating your um, temperature. Like having a child now, I was going to say this earlier, but I didn't want to go too much into having a child. Having a child makes me think about a lot of, this thing, lot of these things. Like when they get a temperature and you figure out why they have a temperature, like what's happening in the body and that you're like, I start to think, well, you know, the thermometer you use to test the temperature, you have to keep it in the same room as them. So it's the same temperature as them. You don't want to get them coming in from outside. And the thermometer has been in the warm room to test that you want it to be in the same room. And and it's because wherever you're hot or cold, your body will regulate your temperature. It will bring you down or take you up Mm -hmm. to get you to the right temperature. So it's it's always like my body's doing it now and your body's doing it now, Mm -hmm. keeping us at the right temperature, whether it's going to have to make you sweat or whatever. So that's still happening as you're under general anesthesia as well, under general anesthetic. So you're you're not dead. No. Your body is fully alive and working, but your consciousness, your experience is off. Well what if that's and then? also but what if that means wait but I'm going way too far. Go if, on. No, but hear that hear yeah. this though. But maybe you are dead. You're not, because also what I was gonna say is I always think this as well about teleportation, another random thing. If you mm-hmm. teleport, yeah. If you if you disassemble if you disassemble all your atoms of your body and assemble them somewhere else is it going to be you? Is the consciousness going to shift with the person? Yeah. And as far as I can remember, and as far as everyone should know, because that's had general anesthetic, when you go and come back, you're still the same person that was gone, if you know what I mean? Like, oh. you don't come back as a well, brand new hold person. Hold on a minute, because now, now this is raising some already don't do this extremely, to me, bro. extremely tricky. You, you come back as yourself. Like, you have the same memories. You well, That could be an imposter, but like you are definitely you, as far as you can tell, if you know what I mean? Like, I'm still me. As far as you can tell. <laughs> as far yeah. as I can tell, I'm still me. But there is the question, I mean, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about this more, but there is a question about who are you anyway? You're like, are you are you the same person over time, you know, whether you've had anesthesia or not? I think we, we often think that we are just this, there's like this essence of, of, of me or essence of either of you that just mm-hmm. persists unchanging over time. But it may not be, it may not be like that. And we may underestimate how our experience of, being whoever we are changes like there's this phenomenon in psychology where if something changes very slowly and we're not really expecting it to change then we don't notice the change right we can have like our experience can change but we don't experience change and i think the same thing happens to the experience of who we are right i i feel like i'm the same person over time but then if i think am i really the same person i was 10 years ago no and in, in ten mm. years' time, probably not. There's a relation, but but a lot of these the things that there are more things that are different than are, not the same. There are me- well, there are some at least some things are different. Yeah. And so when you come around from anesthesia, maybe you're not entirely the same person that you were, but it's close enough. Well, I'm sure, like you said, something along the lines of like we were talking about the the concept of self is a perception. Yeah. Um, and we don't perceive ourselves through ourself. Well, so there's. So, like, what if. Because for me, I was always thinking that maybe the way that people perceive me mm-hmm. is not real. But the way that I perceive myself is real, though. Because I live with, with self. But it, it but depends what you mean by real. It, and it depends. I mean, this is a word that has many potential meanings. But. There's this. There's. I think you need to just take a step back and think about what this. What we mean by perception, right? Because it seems to us. Just think about the. the you know, we're in. We're in this. This wonderful recording studio room at the moment. We're all sitting in the same room, and we. Op- if you open my eyes now, it. It seems as though I'm just experiencing, perceiving mm. this room as it really is. Like there's an objective reality out there. These soundproof walls have wood on them different colors and so on and lights and that's just there but that's probably not what's happening at all right the the 
brain, if you think about what it's like to be a brain, you're, you're stuck inside this bony vault of a skull. There's no light inside the brain. There's no sound inside the brain. It's dark, it's silent. All the brain gets are these electromagnetic signals, light waves. And light isn't colored itself. It's just kind of energy. Mm. And the brain has to figure out on the basis of this, this energy what's out there. So what we perceive isn't the world just pouring itself directly into our minds. The brain is having to always interpret it to figure out what the most likely cause of all this activity and it, is. it predicts it. That's why you can do it. That's why you yeah. can have illusion sometimes. You can exactly. have an illusion that looks like something because your brain thinks that usually when something, you know, like those rooms that look like someone stands on that side of the room, someone stands on that side and they look bigger than that side because your brain doesn't, your brain normally sees a room that does that and just thinks that's what it is, but it doesn't realise that the floor's tilted or it doesn't realise, you know, you know, you can trick your brain into in any illusion, yeah, any it's, optical it's, illusion. It's because the way we, we perceive the world, it, it ne the, we can only sort of have a, a coherent experience of the world by the brain kind of projecting patterns into it. Like the brain knows in some sense that rooms are generally even yeah they, they don't go, get smaller at one end yeah. they're, they're generally like these these three-dimensional rectangular boxes and the brain will therefore interpret visual information using that assumption and you don't know your brain is doing that but it's doing it it's under the hood yeah. Yeah, yeah and so these these that's why these illusions work and the thing is it's not just like illusions um where this happens this is basically happening all the time it's just that we don't notice that it's happening all the time i do I notice it with sounds, yeah. everything. I know. I notice a lot of the time. Let me think of something that I can give. I mean, a, all example. the time. Yeah, not yeah, not uh, yeah. Literally. All yeah, the time. I know. I, I know. I know. I have a lot of times when I notice something that I've got to explain to someone and don't really care, but I just want to let them know that I've clocked this. That whether it's a sound, whether it's something, when I clock it and I think my brain thinks that it's this, but really, have you noticed that if you? Shut, if you turn the uh, whatever fan off, or I don't know, there's little things that happen all the time in my life that I clock, and it's annoying to people if I tell them all the time that things are happening or things that I think I'm noticing, things that I thought were to do with this, but I'm not. And oh, it happens, it happens but, if it, but everyone else's thinks. Yeah, it happens, it happens with me with music production as well. I could be in a studio with music production, and there could be two notes that are being played at the same time, and obviously, if you get technical with it, it must be the waves, the way the waves work in the notes. When they cross, when they go together, they make another note sound or they make so. And I can hear it and, I, and I'll be saying to everyone, we should change this. Or it might even inspire me to go and sing that note extra on the song or whatever. And if I talk to someone about it, they'll be like, oh, whatever. They, they like the end result, but they don't want to know why I'm thinking these things. Mm -hmm. But my brain is just clocking things that are just out of pattern. Or What, what did you think that consciousness was what did i think it is yeah. uh, what what do what do i think it is what do you think it is i think consciousness right the reason if you the reason, what i said to you when i said about my dad i said every single conversation i have with anyone i don't care what it could be about a relationship it could be about saving money it could be about uh getting your kid into a better school it could be whatever it is it always i can always boil it back down to consciousness which is so weird because it's like so abstract yeah but I can always boil it back down to it all the time. Life and death, religion, I don't care what you want to talk about. I'll always boil it back down to consciousness, but I've got no one to talk to you about it. I always, people just think I'm nuts. So in my head, what I think consciousness is, which I well, obviously don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. If I knew what it was, I'd write a book. I don't know what it is. But what I can, what I've taken from my experience in life of what it is, what I think it is, long intro, sorry. I think, I first explain consciousness to people that are around me that don't care like electricity and I say that like you're a human there's a fly there's a dog these are things that I experience in you're experiencing life we're experiencing it and we're all running off consciousness without consciousness we're just dropped to the floor it's a corpse you're just a body you know what I mean so see it as like electricity like that's a camera that's a projector that's a mobile phone there's an electric car there's a drone whatever you want to see a clock whatever you want to look at these lights these, this light is doing something totally different to what that clock is doing. They're yeah. totally different and then to what that speaker can do. And that speaker's doing something totally different to what, I don't know, uh, someone's, I don't know, this might, you know, the camera, anything. But they're all running off electricity. So electricity is the thing that is powering them, which is, but, but then that makes consciousness seem like it's just a power mm -hmm. rather than a collection of things. So what I think it is, is I think it is, I think it's bad that we call it consciousness because it makes it seem like it's a thing. 
Mm. You call it consciousness, everyone thinks it's like, oh, consciousness is this thing, like, you know, like, 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 a, like a currency, like it's a pound. Whereas I think the consciousness is billions of things happening that your brain just puts together and makes you feel like I am experiencing, I am here, I am seeing, I'm hearing, I'm smelling. I'm, like, it's so many things put together that you can't even compute it. So you just take it in as what you're looking like this, like me looking at that computer in my peripheral, seeing people over there, hearing the fans, whirring of speakers, feeling the weight of my body and the chair, the softness on my back, the warmness of my jacket. I don't think about it. I just know it's happening at once. And I just feel like I'm here. This, ex this experience I'm having right now is different to me sitting with no top on in Jamaica on a deck chair with the sound of the sea and the feet, you know what I mean? Like it just feels different, it is different and I take it in as differently in my head. So we just call it consciousness. Just being right, but you, but you, this is this is really interesting. You have hit on one of the the things that, especially in in philosophy, people have said that makes consciousness special. Like why why we have it? Why did evolution make it so that you know we're, we're these we're these meat robots really? Mm. But we have experience as well. Why why did it happen that way? And the distinctive thing about consciousness that sets it apart from, let's say, a camera or or any piece of technology is is exactly this that any conscious experience, the, the experience that we're all having right now or anybody listening to this or any other time is having, is bringing together so many different things in one unified scene. You know, the, whatever's in our visual experience, which is al already quite complicated with lots of objects in different places and movement and so on, but that together with the sound, that together with smell, that together with, um, with the self. You know, we experience all these things relative to who we are yeah. and the emotions that we feel in response to it and the things that we might do you know i could i could get up and move around or open that door so this is inc this is an incredibly efficient way to integrate so much information in the environment in the body in a way that's entirely natural very quick and and guides our behavior it's very special mm. so that seems to be one of the things that that consciousness does it, it, it just integrates all this information and a camera like that camera like for us it's got an image on it but the camera itself doesn't see anything you know it, it, mm. it doesn't put all the pieces together to know that you know chucky's sitting on a chair with a microphone it's just it's just pixels going yeah. on and off it needs to be integrated and that's what our brains do they take a lot of stuff bring it together in one scene why uh, my uh, my little f idea of why is to keep consciousness going because like you said you can get up you can open the door do whatever mm -hmm. you can also why? I, don't, I don't i don't want to get on why though i don't want to get onto this but like not instinct but like kind of like instinct i don't know what to call it instinct yeah like survival instinct basically like the things that you do without thinking subcon subconscious which is a Ooh. good word keep you alive yeah, like breathing, mm. like averting danger. If like I can't choose to, if some, if this door came off now and somebody threw something, I don't think. Oh, let me move. You can't like, choose. I, your I, yeah, yeah, I straight away try and get out of danger. In, in this conscious world, and also whenever you try and get out of danger, I'm going way off the topic. Whenever you try and get out of danger, right? You you're not even in control of it. Like people always say, like when they have a car crash or when they anything that happens that's really, like dangerous. It's like slow motion. Like I did it. You know what I mean? Like you, you're, you, you are super autopiloted to make sure you can keep consciousness going, even down to being attracted to someone and having procreating to make another consciousness is like something that you naturally just have. If you know what I'm saying? Like you don't think about it. So I don't know whether the reason for consciousness is weird. It's like a meta, like a short circuit, just to keep consciousness going because. I always say this as well. If you wipe everyone off the planet, every animal, everything off the planet, everything is still going. And there's obviously other planets, many that we've found that don't have anything on them that are conscious. And our planet will just be another one of those. But we would, if, the, but, but if that did happen, and then there was... Because whoever... I mean, we don't... There's all these different theories of like the first people on Earth and all of that type of mm. stuff. But th whoever that was, or whatever that was, there was consciousness there. So over time, consciousness has probably just evolved in the right. way that we perceive things. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I find really astonishing is is the idea that that um, there was a point in time, certainly on this planet, where there wasn't any experiencing, no consciousness at all. 
Uh, if, but but yeah, if we think if we how though? But well, because, because isn't isn't like. When you say that, like, there wasn't experience on anything, yep. isn't not experiencing nothing, experiencing something? No. No, no, hold on, because the, the experience of absence is not the same as the absence of experience. Right? So we can have an experience of nothing. That's totally different from there being no experience. Well, what does no experience look like? That looks like, it looks a like general, general anesthesia. anesthesia. Exactly. Okay, right. <laughs> so we had a whole, you know, before, so that consciousness seems to be we know we know this much in the neuroscience of it we know that it depends on the brain in in very intimate ways which general anesthesia s disrupts very carefully and fortunately reversibly so that we come back but given that it's this tight dependence on on something biological that, that evolved over a long time you know, at some point in the evolution of complex animals like us consciousness emerged too so there's so, there was some point back in time where there might have been life but there may not have been any consciousness going on can we guarantee that how can't guarantee how? it we that? don't know for sure but but it just seems that it, we it, uh, the mechanisms that we know of that are necessary for consciousness in the human brain are quite complicated mm -hmm. they're not there in let's say a bacteria see um in my head, I would, I would have thought that no, maybe not a bacteria, maybe not a bacteria. How, how I see for it, for like billions of years, there was basically nothing but bacteria yeah. and other things on this planet. So yeah. at that time, there would have just been you know there were no colours, there were no sounds, there was just life chugging but if, along if, but if, without any experience. If though, at I'm some basically. point of having to do something, so you know, like okay. Before there was just no, let's say, at a, a time where there was no consciousness, yeah? But then isn't it from the moment... Because it seems to me that, like, consciousness essentially is some form of, like, data banking, yeah? And so from the moment that you do something, the moment that your hand moves a certain way, mm -hmm. your consciousness remembers that your hand moved a certain way, no? Never remembers. That's not memory. I'm, I'm talking about, like just knowing that you're experiencing, knowing that you're observing, knowing that you're existing. But that, that part is different. To, that part's different I, know, I know it's complicated, but I'm thinking, okay, when you say there was no color, no sound, blah, blah, there was, but there was no experience of it. You well, know what I mean? right. well, here we go. I mean, because something like color, again, it doesn't, a, a color doesn't exist without a Oh, sorry, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. I know right. you mean. And, and even, I mean, uh, this is known, this, you don't need neuroscience for this. Yeah. The art, Cezanne, one of the great impressionist painters, he said, you know, color is where the brain and the universe meet. Right. Which I think is beautiful. And, and people with different brains will experience colors very differently. So before there were brains with visual systems and eyes, you know, there, there, was, there were light waves, but they weren't colored. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. They couldn't be perceived as colours anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. In something you said, yeah, <laughs> I thought this was interesting. I forgot what I was well. going to say. I'll remember it in a minute. Oh uh, yeah, when it comes to you, <laughs> yeah. let me just, it was talking about controlled hallucinations generated by the brain. But you said we're all hallucinating all of the time, including right now. It's just that when we agree about our hallucinations, we call it reality. Yes. Elaborate on that. Well, firstly, the credit for that line it has to go to. Uh, a musician friend of mine actually a guy called Baba Brinkman and right. I worked with him on something called the Rap Guide to Consciousness which, right. was, which was something I didn't yeah. expect to get involved with which was using rap to explain concepts in consciousness oh, cool. science but that that phrase what I mean by that is so it's, firstly it's this idea about perception it's not just this direct reflection of the way the world is it's an active interpretation we actively generate our world's we don't just passively perceive them. And um, when we look at a illusion, a visual illusion, or we look at, I don't know, up at the sky and there are clouds and we see faces in clouds, we kind of know that's not real. You know, we, we know that we're sort of projecting. But most of the time, we assume what we see is real. And this is at least in part because we use language to describe what we see and language blurs over the fine differences so if we're all looking around the same room it's quite likely we're all having subtly different experiences subtly different controlled hallucinations this is the idea that yeah we all 
perception is basically this internally generated thing. So it's a bit like hallucination, but it's controlled by sensory information. It's controlled by the world. So we're not, you know, so that we perceive things in ways that are useful. At least similar, yeah. And if they're sufficiently similar, then um, we have this kind of consensus. Like, yeah, there's a wall over there. That That's a red light coming from yeah. inside the studio. And that, that consensus means that we take it as real. Right. It doesn't mean that we literally make up reality with our minds. Like, no. there's stuff but going I always, on out there. I actually always think... I was talking to your sister about this actually yeah. on the pod funny enough but it was like I've not, I've told this before but I'll mention it just for anyone that is new yeah so um, and we talked about it a little bit when we did the dream machine thing um, I had a weed cake my friend didn't tell me that it was a weed cake yeah that's a whole next story yeah I remember anyway, I saw this episode anyway to cut a super long story short yeah it was on the way home and I noticed like at the time we were just doing mad things it, but this is all from the, pl- the place of hindsight now at the time I didn't know what we, we were just outside the club I was DJing at this club we've left the club early and we were just like walking in different directions and I remember thinking like why is he doing that and why am I over here why is he over there whatever we ended up jumping in the car and we're just laughing about just nothing yeah and as we started laughing about nothing I remember realising what he said wasn't that funny <laughs> so now I'm thinking there was something in them cakes and I remember tapping him saying nah 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 that wasn't that funny there's something in them cakes so anyway now literally all of a sudden things started changing colour like it just went red I've jumped out of the car I was going all over the place and then I had like these um, these three uh, changes of colour which I'll talk about later on when we're talking about the, the dream machine thing mm-hmm. but I started seeing stuff. I remember just seeing things and like, like different colors. So like, let's say, say for example, I'd see a brick. I'd see a color of a brick, but the, that brick that I recognize is not the color that I was used to seeing. Yeah. But fast forward that year, it made me think, are we seeing the same thing? Generally, anyway. And I was thinking, it was what I saw at the times that I was seeing those things, what it actually really is. And let's just say, for example, like we can we can agree that this bit here is black, yeah? yeah? But are we, or Jamie's do-rag, yeah. it's black. But are we seeing the same black? I ha- I've had this discussion so many times, so many times, I've watched YouTube videos on it and everything. And it happens to me mostly, it makes me, re- I realise it mostly with the colours blue and green because... I think I have a absolute definitive idea of what blue and green is. And then I was out with Sarah again, was at Carpet Right, and they had a logo, a little tick, and she was calling it, I don't wanna get it wrong now, she was calling it blue. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this and it is green, yeah? (laughs) It's green. So I was thinking, okay, either she is seeing a top, she's seeing what I see as blue, that tick. Or she calls what I call blue, my, her bar- cause obviously colors on a spectrum, it just goes from infrared to ultraviolet, I'm mm-hmm. guessing. It goes from like no, red. It goes further either side. Oh, sorry, yeah, it goes to x-rays yeah, and, yeah. and microwaves and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But the visual uh, spectrum on the electromagnetic spectrum is like just in from infrared into red and then goes through all the colors of the rainbow and then out at ultraviolet to purple and out yeah. to other things. So they like we've just divided them up and called them orange, red, green. You know what I mean? Then we got even better to say turquoise and vi- you know what I mean. We got, yeah, yeah, we, but no, no matter how much you zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, to to you it might just look like all purple. But if somebody had better eyesight, they could probably see different set shades of that as well. Yeah, and the yeah. energy, of course. There's no divisions in the energy. It's just like it's continuous. It's our like brains yeah. that impose these differences where suddenly you know you can change the thing very smoothly. And then you'll say, oh, it's gone from blue to green. And Sarah might still say, no, no, it's yeah, exactly it's what I'm right saying. Now. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. So maybe my boundaries are different to her boundaries on what blue and green is. Then I started to think, wow, that's when I started to watch on, online and see if we actually do all see the same colors and start researching color blindness and blah, mm. blah, blah, if we all do see the same colors. And you just reminded me just now when you said that, first I was going to ask you, is that a thing? Is there somewhere I can go and look at something and and you can sit in a room with your friend and say, yeah, it's changed, it's red. And they'll be like, no, no, no. I want to know if that's a thing. But then you also reminded me what I wanted to say was consciousness 
Well, I don't Wait, could you hold on to that though? Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Because it is a thing. Oh, I forget. It is a thing. I mean, yeah. so, so write this, it down if you need to. This yeah. is this is like this. Actually, what you said and you said two things. They're both. They both. I want to touch on both of them because yeah. yes, we all are going to experience things differently. The black, we may I may have a different experience of black. I may use the same word, but the experience might be different in exactly the same way that you were saying about about colours. Mm. Do you remember that? Um, Years ago, there was this photo of a dress that half yeah, the world yeah, saw yeah. as blue and go- yeah. blue and that's black. A, yeah, yeah, so gold and bl- gold and black or blue and grey or gold something. Gold black like, yeah. and yeah, yeah. white and, or yellow and white or yeah, something like that. Yeah. And that was fascinating because this was new in, in neuroscience as well. No one had sort of come across this before, where half the world were firmly convinced it was one way, and half the world were firmly convinced it was another way. And what was going on here was that when when we see a color, when we experience a color. It depends not only on the light coming from whatever the object is, but on all the other light that's around us. So if we take mm. a piece of white paper from in this studio, if we take it outside, it's still going to look the same white. But the light coming into our eyes is, is totally different because the ambient light here is kind of yellowish mm. and outside it's bluish, even on a cloudy day. And our brain knows this and takes it into account so that we still see the white. paper as the same colour. And that photo of the dress, that was really playing with that because it's really ambiguous where it, whether is. The surround, where it is, whether it's inside or outdoors. And so different people's brains, it turns out, like a more biased one way or the other on that kind of making that kind of assumption. So we had two different experiences. And what one of the things we're, we're doing in, in my lab now at Sussex down on, in Brighton um, is trying to measure this because it's it seems almost, it almost has to be that just as we all differ like externally, I mean, we're all different heights and mm. skin colors and shapes and, and so on. Um, and we know this, we can see it, it's easy to, to notice this, even if we don't take much account of it. But we all have different brains too. So we're all going to differ on the inside as well, whether it's color perception or, and you don't have to be colorblind or anything yeah. like that. I'm just like a... People who aren't colorblind will still experience things slightly differently. But because it's these experiences are unique and private to each of us, we I can't see what you see. No. So it's it's and because it seems as though I see the world as it really is, and it doesn't seem as though it's like my particular take on it. Yeah. It's very easy to overlook that we all have these these different experiences. So we got this project, it's called the Perception Census, like a census where we're trying to, you know measure as many people as possible and we're trying to make a map of how different people's experiences are in vision in in music in sound in time in oh emotion. i know you're, yeah, you know i've got so much to say is it can you, hey. is there a correct is there a what's is there a correct way uh, no that's it right so so there's not even i mean there are there are many not every way is equally wrong right if i walk out on the street and i don't see this bus which is coming towards me then yeah. that's a, that's you know that's More perception than, not yeah. working very well yeah. Yeah. Hit by the bus but there isn't a single correct way of experiencing things like so yeah it, there's not there's not a right way no no it all it all it, it's that there's this word in neuroscience which gets abused quite a lot which is called neurotypical you know this idea that that if you if you're not neurodivergence with like autism or something like that then you're neurotypical and you you know you have accurate perception and how do you know if you've got autism i want to do a test um, how do you do that there are all sorts of all sorts of tests out there it's i mean you you probably it's a spectrum right again anyway um we're all somewhere on this on this spectrum but interesting people with autism they often have really hypersensitivity to to lights and sounds that's one thing that can go on when you said that about everyone's got different brains, like we've got different bodies, yeah. different everything, you have different brains as well. And we have different organs that we use to experience. Everyone's got different ears, different nose, different whatever. There's so many times, like that 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 uh, carpet rat tick is only one time I can say I've uh, had a dispute with someone about something that is so obvious and clean straight to me and it is different. But it happens a lot in say music. When I, when I say to someone, even not the text of music, because if we all had the same brain and same uh, hearing device would like the same exact same songs for the exact same mm-hmm. reasons whereas I'll be like to well, someone you know, isn't that taste? yeah I know taste, but you, taste I, but, and consciousness is different but your taste is, is, is pleasurable 
Like, like, okay. Oh, you mean musical taste? Yeah, right? musical taste. Or, or yes. Literal taste. Because our literal taste. No, is, no, I mean, I meant like, yeah, musical. Our literal like, taste, taste is more taste similar. Is, taste is some, huh? Our literal taste is more similar than say our musical taste. Like there could be a yeah, song I could be showing all my friends, bro. listen to this, this is so sick. And they will not be understanding why I mm. think this thing is so amazing. But then we will all like a neat burger or we will all, you know what I mean? Like, but not really. general, gen, know, then gen, there's Marmite. Yeah, but then there's okay, I know, but I'm, but I'm saying this, I'm saying that, like, I'm saying actual taste is, is uh, more agreeable, if you know what I'm saying, than say style, uh, music, like things that are, that play more in your brain. But then like taste is, so I think there's almost a, a scale of these things. So something like aesthetic appreciation, like for music yeah. or visual art or something, we all recognize that people will respond differently. You might like something I don't or because mm. you know more about it, you've more familiarity with it and so on. And that's generally accepted. No one would expect everybody to react the same to a piece of art. And then with taste, I think that's somewhere in the middle. I mean, there, there are examples like Marmite or whatever, where some people like it, some people hate it. But Marmite is a strong taste. It has a strong taste, but for some people, maybe not. But then down, down below, underneath that, then there's things like vision, where now the, people make the opposite assumption that no, there's no difference. We all see, we all see the same thing. And I think these, this, where although vision is much more, I would say, there's much more of a consensus. There's still differences. We mm. still don't see the same world the same way and there isn't a single accurate like benchmark that you know, ideal way of perceiving I was actually. trying to explain the dream machine to Sarah on the, on the, when, I, when we left here because I was trying to say you should go but I don't want to tell her what it's about because I wanted her to experience it and then in this to, I don't want to forget what you were saying you were saying we don't yeah. see things the same yeah. and I was going to say that yes let me just use an example one example I always use is, is school that's one that's stuck in my head of going to school on the first day of school, and one that I also think people can relate to, on your first day of school, when you go to secondary school, when you walk in and you realize you've got freedom to go to class yourself, like the, mm -hmm. the hall, you're, you're like a year seven, so like the halls are so big, your rucksack's massive, like everything is, and also you feel like, you also feel that everyone else that is human and experiencing knows more than you. All the teachers know, all the older years, they know where to go, everything. You're lost in this big building, like everything, the, 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 the emotion, the feeling of it, the smell of the new school, the the awareness that you're not with your parents and you're, you're like, for me, it was further away from home than my primary school and like everything, the whole sensation of being there, the overwhelmingness of it gave me an experience of, wow, this place is massive. This is crazy. I'm becoming an adult. It happened again at uni, but not so much. Like I'm becoming an adult. Like this is nuts. But then on your last year of school, that building is like, Tesco. It's like it's just walking tiny. around any building, it's but tiny. it's exactly the same building, and you're exactly the same person, hopefully. Yeah. And well, it's just yeah. it's just perception <laughs> of it, and then you realize this is how people felt when I came on my first day, and you're seeing New Year Sevens come into school as well, and you're like, I remember how they feel, but it's the same building. And again, you said we're in this room experiencing this, these lights, and I'm thinking, yeah, it's like my third or fourth time in here. It's probably your first, yeah. how you're seeing it, but it's the first time I've ever looked in there. I've never walked in there. I never even knew that was even there. Oh, so the feeling of what you get when you see that first thing. Yes, let me get onto that feeling bit. Oh, so, okay. but Chucky comes here all the time. He knows this room, like back of his hand, there's nothing to him. You know what I mean? If I had to draw this room, I would not have drawn a door there. I just drew, drew drew a room like this, the door there. I wouldn't even realize the little code went in there, nothing. So that like my like perception. Then I said to Sarah, I said, Do we we all see things different. You said a bus. If you if you didn't see a bus, like you, that'd be obvious. So I said to Sarah, if we all looked at a white car and someone said that car is green, then it's kind of obvious that they're saying something different. But if I was to pull up outside right now, if you was at home with your friends and I pulled up outside right now in a chrome gold Lamborghini, like you'd all see it but you would feel something as well. You might, there's no word to put on that feeling of like, <gasps> or like, like that, that, that kind of, there's no word to put on it. It's just a feeling you get as you look at it, which might make you overlook some things visually because mm -hmm. you're experiencing the sound of it. You might be walking past, you might realize the heat coming off a certain vent or something. Like there's an experience that, 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 that makes up your experience of being next to it rather than watching a Lamborghini on YouTube, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm better, but then somebody who is, some millionaire that's got seven Lamborghinis, he doesn't care, he doesn't even wash, like, to wash his cars, whatever, that must be one of his. He will see that differently to her. So someone seeing it for the first time, this car they've seen online, he might see the cracked, the, the curved rim straight away. He might, you know what I mean? He might notice, oh, that's a LP, whatever, because it hasn't got a facelift bumper or, like, to him, he's familiar with it, he sees it differently. So when we look at stuff, we actually do see things 
differently, but we don't notice it. So I might feel like, like today I said it was at the dream machine. I thought I don't keep going on about it, but I feel good today. And I've had a, my experience was a certain way because of how I feel. Right. Whereas I, cause I had time to take, take time out and notice it. Mm. I realized that. Whereas on a normal day, I wouldn't realize that. So when on a normal day, when I'm walking to collect my takeaway uh, imposter wrap from Nando's and I'm walking in past like, someone in the queue and they feel a certain way as they feel like this guy's pushing in when I'm just gonna collect something. And I'm like, why are you, you know what I mean? Like we have different occasions or different uh, interactions with people. They literally feel different and they see the world different than you see the world that day. Like people see the world differently, factually. And I don't realize it. I go around my day thinking everyone's seeing what I'm seeing. And I think a useful addition to that is that when you know, when you know that's what's going on, I think it can give a bit of humility about our own way of seeing. And if we realize that like, okay, everybody does see things differently, that means even the way I see things isn't necessarily the way they actually are. And I think that can be, that can be really helpful. It's sort of, it, allows you, it allows you to almost take other people's perspectives a bit more easily. I ain't, I ain't you can far. also, you can- I, I, always think, I always think I'm right. Oh no, I haven't thought about that one. But you can I always also, think I'm right. You can I'm also not. use that to manipulate people though, as well though, right? Because if you can do something to trigger the way that they feel, maybe through their consciousness, you can you can make them make decisions that could benefit other that, people. Yeah, that, 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 that does that happen. Mean, and that, that's what speak to Darren media Brown. does all the time. Right? Or speak to Darren Brown. That's what he does all day. That's what people do that all the time. They, they alter your reality or they, they, they um, influence your perception on something and they try and statistically prove that if you can make them feel this way, they might choose this yeah. more often and they make a TV show out of it. And they make it, uh, so, I mean, he uses hypnotism, right? Which, mm. is a, which is a real thing and people vary a lot in how susceptible they are to experiencing things that are suggested to them. And some people, it's, it's a very, you know, they're very strong in this. So they, they, they react very strongly to suggestion and can have experiences, visual experiences, auditory experiences, just because of the context and because of what's being, you know, what, what they're supposed to do. Whereas other people, it doesn't work at all, which is why in all these things, these Darren Brown things, there's always this selection process where he oh, picks particular me, people out. He's going to pick pick the the responders from, yeah. from the non. -responders. I always think nothing works for me. Yeah, yeah, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and one time it, I was, that would work. We was out somewhere once, and there was a hypnotist there, and they were trying to hypnotize and jammer. <laughs> it was funny because <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was like it was working. He was doing everything he was doing. Then one time he just he just switched and went, "Oh, move, man!" and walked off. And everyone's like, "What? We believed we believe we all believed that it was working, but it wasn't working." Yeah. He was just going along with it. Then he switched and went off. But I'm yet to see. I want out like hypnotism. I've grown up watching what was it Paul McKenna yeah. on TV, all these things, and I believed everything. And I'm coming from an African background. My mum and dad believed in like masquerades and spirits and powers in Nigeria and things like that. So I've just bought it all out. I don't believe in none of it at all. Hypnotism, everything. But now you're making me think that it, it might be a level. Can I say what I wanted to say? Because it's going on to it. Or yeah, what, 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 what I'm saying. Say. Consciousness, yeah. There's a like you. What did you say again? You said something about there is. I can't remember what I said, but I remember what I thought anyway. Mm -hmm. Consciousness. Like it shouldn't be one word, mm -hmm. it's because it, it's a collection of things, and I think I can uh, I can relate it to music, where if some if if you were to play music on at such a slow speed, it might just sound like one note being held for a long time, or it might just sound like oh yeah I know what you mean though. and then didn't somebody do that? Isn't there a piece of music that's sort of designed to be played and it takes a hundred years or something? I don't know. Really? I, I, I have no clue, but I, I just thought this myself. I just thought, if you play music really, really slow, it will sound like just instruments. Yeah. And that to me will be like- The, the tone would go like down. down. So low, you might not even hear it properly, or you might just hear it. I was thinking that when you was talking about the colors just there, yeah, mm. I was thinking, because there's this nuance to the, the changing of the color, but the more that you stretch it- That's what we're talking about, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. more that you stretch yeah. that, the the it's difficult to see the actual change in and then do yeah. you even do you see like the did you see the change time? yeah yeah like do you if, even yeah. see the change you, get the spectrum and zoom out. you don't see the change yeah, so that that's this and we mentioned it briefly already there's this there's this thing called change blindness which is exactly that if if things change really slowly and you're not expecting them to change and you're not focusing on it doesn't thing, change can I show then, you that video then, well your experience will change but the but you won't experience the change. change, right, 
Right? <laughs> that is nuts. So I, tr- I tried to use that to get out of a driving ticket in San Diego. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Wow, explain. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because they put up. Um, I used to take this. I used to live in San Diego for about six years. <gasps> I did the same. I was going to say, I did the same yeah. thing. What are you going to say? I, was, but I bet you in mind I did the really? same. Go on. Yeah, I promise you. <laughs> so I used, to, I used to drive and turn down a, a left turn to park up and go surfing, hmm. you know, two, three times a week at this particular beach. And then one time I did this and I got hauled over by a cop. He was hauling loads of people over and giving them all tickets because it turned out there'd been an, a new no left turn s- sign installed at the junction. And I hadn't, I didn't notice it. And I hadn't, so I turned and I got a ticket. And um, he said, like, well, it was, it's completely visible. You know, you can, the sign is right there. And it's true, it's right there. So you stop and the sign is right in front of where I was, right in front. But my defense was that, okay, the sign may have been there, but my brain was so used to the sign not being there and there was no reason to expect a change that I literally didn't experience the sign. Now, it may have been there in the world, but I but did not actually see it. Yeah. And there's a very good reason from psychology called change blindness to justify that. So I, <laughs> I, I did, I mean, I, looking back, I, you know, I don't know what my boss was thinking because I spent quite a bit of time on this. I wrote a, a, a deposition to the traffic authority, whatever, which got just rejected. Oh, so you went that far? Well, I, I went further, I then went to traffic court so I went for my day in oh court. My God. I didn't go this far. I didn't That's go gangster. Just... <laughs> that is gangster. I, I, I went to the speed awareness. No, no. <laughs> was it speed awareness? It was, they, they done me for driving without due care and attention or something like that. It was outside where Visions used to be. It yeah. was It was 20 mile per hour. But it, they, they like, it wasn't, it used to be 30 mile per hour. There's even a speed camera. Just, if you go past Dawson, you're going towards Hoxton. There's a speed camera over the little bridge where the river is, mm-hmm. and that's, that was a 30 speed camera. So I'm driving, and police are on the other side of the road. This is why I made the song It's Mad. On the, on the, the original intro to the song It's Mad is me saying, Oh, shout out to the policeman that fucking stopped me. Oh, yeah. Going to, I've got an original intro to it before I said, Big up my dad, whatever. But he was driving up the side of the road to me, and I'm driving. He's done a UE, he's following me. I thought, Why are you following me for? I'm gonna just cruise control at 30, man. I can't bother. Cruise control at 30, he pulled me over. I'm thinking, Why are you pulling me over, bro? Like, what is wrong with you? He's got out of the car and he's got out of his colleagues as well. And one of the colleagues has recognised me. And he said, oh, he's got and, but he was like, he don't care. He didn't care about me. He's like, come over here. How fast did you go in? I said, I don't know. I said, how fast did you go in? I said, I don't know. It's the speed limit, I guess. He goes, I, no, you know what I said? I said, I couldn't have been going faster than the speed limit because we both went for a camera. It didn't flash. So uh, the speed limit, I guess. I wasn't really paying attention. He goes, well, I'll tell you what. It was a 20 and you was going faster than 20. I said, it's not a 20. It's a 30, bro. He goes, well, there you go. It's a 20. I said, no, it's not a 20. He goes, it's a 20. And on the floor, it's got painted on the floor, 20. It's got new right. 20 signs up, everything. I'm thinking, right, in my head, I'm thinking it's only 20, because I'm looking back that way. I can see it's 20 on this side. But I'm thinking, maybe it's not 20 on my side. Because like, there's no way it's 20 on my side. I know it's not 20 on my side because I come down this road all the time. You know what I'm saying? But then, yeah, the, the girl was like, let's Jamie just agree with him, please. Like, um, like he's our boss, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, he's not going to give in, like, stop arguing with him, I beg you, like, it's not gonna, not gonna be good. I was like, no, I don't care, like, whatever, like, I don't care. Argued with him, he sent me to some speed awareness or some driving about due care and attention course or whatever, whatever, and it is a 20, and I can't believe it's a 20. I even, I, I, I had to change the intro your of the perception, song. Your perception of Because it, was it wasn't a 20 in my head. Yes. Like, I'm driving through the thing, I'm looking, to, yeah. I've seen police, I've looked at everywhere, I can't, you know, 20 signs, I've gone at 30, he's done a you, he followed me, I don't care, I'm going at 30, the camera didn't flash, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Well, I, tell you, I, I went all the way to traffic court with my defense. And <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't. Yeah, it still didn't work. I was still wrong. I was yeah, yeah. still right. Um, you mentioned about like measuring consciousness. Yeah, how do you do that? And maybe this might be a different question on top of it. Yeah, but maybe it ties together. But I always used to hear people talking about um, we only use a certain percentage of our brain, and I'm mm-hmm. still. A t- I'm still connecting that in some way to consciousness too. How do people know that? So that's not true, I don't think. This idea that we use 10% of our brain is, is just wrong. We, we use all of it basically all of the time. But what is, what is true is that, is that different parts are more important for different things. And especially for, for consciousness, what's I mean, one thing that's always surprised me, still surprises me, is that 
three quarters of your brain in terms of the number of brain cells. Like three quarters of all the brain cells, neurons that we have, are basically not involved in being conscious. So we have this, this part of the brain called the cerebellum, it's at the back. And it has three quarters of all the neurons. And we've got about 86 billion neurons as adult human beings. Three quarters of the neurons are in the cerebellum. And if we lost our cerebellums, we, we would be bad at many things. Couldn't move smoothly, speak properly, think clearly, all this stuff. But we would still be completely conscious. So consciousness and everything that goes along with it is supported by just one quarter of the cells in our brain in, in the the front one quarter but mass wise is it more it's more it is more it is more it's well and certainly volume wise yeah. and like it's a bigger part of the brain, brain. but but basically this idea of 10 percent or whatever it is it's it's um i'm not even entirely sure where it, where it comes from originally there's probably many origin stories for it but no we need pretty much all of our brain all the time well then how so. do you measure how do you measure what how do you measure the consciousness side of it how do you measure that? This is it's still it's still a very much active research. So measuring things is usually super important in science. Like when we were trying to understand temperature 100, 200 or 300 years ago, development of thermometers was was absolutely key to understanding what temperature was, what made something hot or cold. And so for consciousness it's a similar idea that to get a good understanding of it we need to be able to measure on a scale, like what happens when people lose it under anesthesia mm. or sleep again, and um, or what happens in other conditions like in psychedelics and so on. And there are many ways to do this. The, the way that, that I think is best, and we use a version of it in, in my lab at Sussex, is the level of consciousness seems to depend on how different parts of the brain talk to each other. And what you can do to measure that is you, you basically, you stimulate the brain so you take like a big electromagnet and you mm. put it near the, near the skull and you turn it on for a tiny amount of time and it sends a pulse of energy into the brain. You don't notice this happening, it just goes straight in. And then you record the echo of it. You, you put all these sensors called EEG, you put all these sensors, like a cap, you, know, mm. you can put sensors. And it's a bit like throwing a stone into a pond of water. If the water is really still, there's still a big splash, and but there's a, quite a simple ripple. There's just like one set of ripples that goes out. That would be what would happen in an unconscious brain or at low levels of consciousness, like a big initial response and then it dies away. But if you throw a, a bunch of stones into a pond or the ponds are like a complicated pond with waves and things, then the, the pattern of ripples is much more complex. They, they bounce off each other, they come and go. And that's more like what happens in a, in a conscious brain. And you can see that by measuring the, it's, it's like, instead of throwing a, sp a stone into a pond, it's like banging on the brain with an electrical hammer mm. and then listening to the echo. And is it a complicated echo or a simple echo? And that's the sort of the currently the most advanced way of measuring how conscious somebody is. And you can put a number to it. Which you can put a number to this it. This is what it, it. I keep forget. I keep starting what say what I'm gonna say. I haven't even finished it yet about music. That's what that's this is what my understanding of consciousness is. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you play music slow, you'd hear one note at a time. But if you play music fast, it becomes a song that you can experience and enjoy. So I think consciousness is similar as to where, like, I don't think bacteria is consciousness, but there are things that are conscious but are not as conscious as, say, a self-conscious human being who is. Mm function yeah. you know so yeah so like say i don't know a wasp a bee or something that is smaller and i think isn't as conscious is just like if you were to measure their consciousness to a number it would just be a lower number and it'll be a slower song that isn't as coherent to you as as music if you know what i'm saying whereas us human beings we have consciousness which is a beautiful melody playing in our head a beautiful song symphony playing in our head which keeps us awake and alive and conscious and then anesthesia is like pressing stop on the vinyl and right. it's, there's no music playing at all. But that's what I was going to ask next was, with an, I don't know how anesthetic works at all. I don't have a clue what's going on. And could they not ramp it? Could they not ramp it to, obviously it would be inhumane. Ramp so to, what? To, to, anesthetic to find out yeah, yeah. what consciousness is 
at a lower level of consciousness. Yeah, this has been done. This has been done. I mean, yeah. It wouldn't happen in a hospital, right? Yeah. Because then you just want people to be unconscious so yeah. they don't feel that yeah 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 you don't want to play yeah. with it <laughs> that would be fun <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying yeah. right? they're, they're I'm sure people do try a thing though but yeah anyway yeah there are ethics committees that yeah. make sure that doesn't happen but but in in the lab for sure um, people have done this so you, you, you can sort of inject anesthesia very very slowly very small amounts and basically instead of taking people down straight away so remember you were saying you yeah. like count back and ten nine eight and you're gone mm-hmm. Instead of that, you take them down over half an hour or so, and you can you can then see more clearly what starts to happen. And even when you take it, people down slowly, there's 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 a sort of transition, there's a threshold, and they fall off the edge. And at this point, the, what happens in what how anesthetics work? Nobody really knows how they work. Actually, we just Seriously? know that they do. Oh my god! But no one really knows. <laughs> that. No, no one knows that. I'm gonna find out. <laughs> that is insane. But they do. I mean, nobody. There's plenty of things in medicine that we don't exactly know how they work. We just know that they work. Do. And we just know that it works. Like, Listen, don't worry about that, man. It works, bro. <laughs> just chill out. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. Hey, come. We got you. We got you. It works. Come, come to here. We got you. Don't worry. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to show you this quickly on here. Go on, play this. I hope it's the same one. of the year. Is there oh, I don't do you know. know. This is not. You don't good. need. This is not good for the audio. You don't need sound. You don't need sound. I'm going to take this out. You can read it. You can read it. You can read it. I know this one. I know. I know this one. Yeah. You can read it. This is from a friend of mine called Michael Cohen. You're about to see the waiting room of a of a science laboratory. Yep. Uh, there's lights in the way, so this is going to be it's, tricky. Yeah, yeah, describe it. Describe. Oh, what's, yeah. I've got this good. Descri- describe what's in the room. Yeah. What's, yeah. What are the objects? Okay, so basically, there's a couch. Are you pausing it? No, no, no. no, 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 no. There's a couch. There's um, there's cushions. There's a table. Yeah. Um, there's like a little office sort of little space in the corner where there's like a desk with a laptop on it. There is books. There's a big shelf. Yeah. Oh, oh. what? Did you, you not, notice? Did you notice that a majority of the objects slowly, slowly change? Change. Wait, pause this. Wait, because there's lights. As I'm reading, I can yeah, see. Yeah. Um, go back. Did you notice that a majority of the objects slowly changed slash moved moved while the video played? Did you? Did you notice anything changing in that video? No. Good. Come. On, what's it? What's it say next? What's it say next? Let's see, Let's the, see first the first frame of the video and the last frame of the video back to back. So when it, when the video first started, that's what you saw. Yeah. And that's what it ended up. No way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No way. way. Yeah. What? That's change blindness. We what? were talking. About, I'm glad. I'm so wait, glad you had that video. Second. That's if you're still um, if you're still skeptical, rewatch the video. Okay, boom. Okay. Yeah. So you could, watch it one. Watch it one more time quickly from the beginning. Go back. And just focus on anything you want to focus on: the blinds, the ceiling, the floor, yeah. anything. Right. Everything second, changes. Anything. The, co- the, co- the color of the, the the cushions. Whatever you want to focus on, focus on one thing. Anything. The ceiling, the window, the blinds, the rug on the floor. Look at the cushions on the sofa. Playing, yeah, it's working. I did notice the top. Oh the shit! Window. See. Oh my god! <laughs> no! It's mad. So that's happening. You're just watching it. It's a dead scene to you. Nothing is changing. So the but reason why it changes. got me here is because I'm looking at all these different things yeah. as around the room, innit? The, so like, the exercise ball disappeared from under the table, everything. Like, literally, I watched it back. I couldn't believe it. Because I'm looking at it. Because it's changing so, so what's slowly. The brain do- so ex- explain that. So the reason that works is because. Uh, we're only at any given time we're only sampling we're only like sensitive to a very small amount of information that's out there and it seems as though we, we see everything all at once but actually like the center of our vision which is quite the detailed bit is about like the size of holding your thumb this far from your from your face mm. everything else is quite not very well detected by our eyes um, and what's more, like we're always moving it around. We're always moving our eyes like m- multiple times every every minute. And even when we're not moving our eyes, we're paying attention to different parts. Like I can keep my eyes here, and I can pay attention over there. Mm. And so, actually, what's ha- from a brain's perspective, what's happening is it's constantly like over there, over there. What's happening there? What's happening there? What's happening there? And the rest of it, um, it's not paying attention to what's happening. So it just uses what it already has. So it's already figured out, okay, I'm in a room and there are these objects. Yeah. And so that's what we perceive. And then it'll update that based on the new information it gets when looking around. But you, re- you, because of the way that's set up and because it changes slowly, 
even if you look around, you're never going to hit on something that's, that's going to tell definitely you change. Yeah, happening. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you never hit on the moment of change. So our experience, we, well, it changes, but we don't experience the change. Right. And that's the- that's again, that's that's like the the. The, th- the really important thing for me here is is to th- realise that that's not just this clever little demonstration, although it is a very clever yeah. demonstration, but this is also happening here. Mm. You know, w- we're sampling just little bits of what's going on all the time, and our brains are doing the rest. Yeah, on a micro vibe. What does like? I'm just changing it just a tiny bit, yeah. But what does like? What does psychedelics tell us about consciousness? I've been too scared. I've never done any because I'm too sc- not scared, but like I'm scared, man. Am I yeah. scared? Uh, yeah, yeah. I no, let's do it. No, no, do it. Go on, do it. Go on, say it. Go on, say it. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm not, pussy. Okay, I'll tell you that now. <laughs> At least I'm pussy. But, I'm a bit scared, but but I'm, I'm also not. I'm a bit scared. I'm a bit um like sh- strong in my head where I think that I don't need to. I already know. I already understand what's going to do, and I already can do that without it. If, you know what I'm no, but hear what? But no, I'm, I might sorry, be lying. You're limiting yourself by I, thinking that way. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I know I am, but I still believe that everyone that has ever done any psychedelics and talk, spoke to me about it, I'm like, yeah, I, 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 can, I can do that. Yeah, no, I, yeah like, <laughs> I would, or, or, or they say things, I think, yeah, I already knew that. You know what I mean? Like, whether they say, like, someone said to me before, like, oh, yeah, like, you realise that, like, you know, they say, like, someone said to me before, like, oh, yeah, like, you realise that, like, you are the earth. Not like, oh, oh, you are the earth. No, but you actually are the planet that but you're let me on. Stop, let me stop every, you. Every, let me stop every, you every single, yeah. I hear that. Yeah. And maybe you're right in thinking that. But do you know what you're not seeing, which is the 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 um the important part, which you know as well, and which you talked about before, the feeling of it. So you mm-hmm. know that, yeah. but there's a feeling attached to that experience. Do you get what I'm yeah, saying? I know, I know. So it's the feeling that is just as important as the seeing or knowing. The feeling is the new bit. Yeah, you yeah. might know, because I'm the same. Yeah, Look, it's, like, it's like skydiving as well. I do it skydiving. I know what it's like. Like, no one could tell me, I've never skydived in my life, but, but I know what it's like. I know what it is. I know it's like, I'm gonna die, no, I'm not. You could probably like, describe I know the feeling. Everything, I could write a book about it, but I've right. never done it, and but I've never the, felt but, it. Right, so it might be exact, if you do do it, it might be exactly what you would expect, mm. but you would still learn something. Yes. Yeah. Because the first person experience is yeah. not something that you can ever know just through imagination or abstract knowledge right it's a, it's a fit. And for me it's, I think there's a lot to be there's a lot to be learned and by the way I think you, you know, there are good reasons to be a bit worried about it too it's mm. a very powerful manipulation I know you were saying earlier that, that although you're not a control freak you like to control yeah, everything yeah I love to be in control of <laughs> no, no, no I don't love to sorry I like it when I'm in control of something and it works and I'm like yes yeah. so now I know I can be in control of that and it works I can what about when it doesn't when it doesn't, I try and find ways to make it yeah. work. What if it doesn't? When I, I don't stop until I'm dead, I don't mind. But what, what happens if it doesn't? I try something else. I try like whether, like whether it's Do controlling. You accept. Uh, Do you accept? If it's out of my control, then yeah. Because that's 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 important. If it's out of my control, then yeah. Like imagine if I wanted, I don't know, like you know, some people want like their beard to connect or so I don't know or whatever. <laughs> I, if, if, if like if I can't, I just don't care. I don't mind. You know what I mean? Something like that, yeah, I don't yeah. care about. But if it's something like, oh, I'm always upset on the weekend. Oh, yeah. Because no, 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 no. I don't know, like whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't know, whatever it will be. I'll be like, okay, cool. I'm gonna make sure I, make, I pattern it so that boom, 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 and I make sure my life. I'm, I want to be happy. I want to be upbeat. I want to be, you know what I mean? I don't want. I don't want. I don't want some some external thing to always make me a certain way. That's not what I want to be like. So I try and control it. And once I get control of it, if it didn't work, if I if I was like, oh, I'm gonna start ju- juicing. I'm gonna start. I don't know, doing something that makes me happy. I'm gonna, I read up that you should. I don't know, have be grounded wear no socks in your garden I don't know what kind of thing I would read and think that would no, make me no, feel better no, if it didn't no. work yeah. I'll try something else try something else till I've realised yeah man on weekends I'm going to be at my mum's house on weekends man I feel you know what I mean whatever it is and I'll be in control that way you know what I'm saying I'm not a control freak no, but I, I like to be in control of something <laughs> no, and when it works alright I'm going cool <laughs> carry on <laughs> never I'm sorry the control freak I'm not joking <laughs> yes. but yeah go I am you got me <laughs> go on uh, Psychedelics and, and yeah, so I mean, I think yeah, we can we can learn a lot because, in a sense, it's a little bit like anaesthetics. You know, you you in, you give this simple chemical, introduce a simple chemical into the brain, and something dramatic happens to consciousness. And anaesthesia, the dramatic thing is it goes away. Mm. In psychedelics, the dramatic thing is it changes completely. 
and it it reveals that there are other ways our brains can work when generating consciousness like it it can stop us taking for granted as requiring no explanation the rest of our everyday life so i think the value is not purely in the psychedelic experience itself but in how it then leads us to think about normal everyday experience because we realize that the brain is always generating the experiences that we have it's just that under psychedelics that process becomes much more obvious because we take this chemical and bam you know things happen you've you the, the the distinction between the self and the rest of the world which many people just take for granted right you know mm. i'm i'm me and there's the world you know that dissolves or can dissolve in psychedelics yep. visual experience can can change completely you, know, you look at a sky thing things start to happen or you can realize that that the brain is very powerful at creating experience out of what's going on it's not just directly reflecting it and of course you can you know you can then do experiments and colleagues of mine and friends in, in london and elsewhere you have know, done these amazing experiments w recording from the brain while people are, are on psychedelics to see what happens in the brain and then trying to use that to understand how experience changes well i always think i wonder if depending on the psychedelic of course that if that is the correct what we're seeing then is the correct thing that we're supposed to be there's seeing no or experience. Yeah. there's no correct there's just matt it just matters what you're oh, okay but then matters what you agree on that's another reason why i don't take psychedelics what i haven't is also because one first of all when you first the first thing you said in this whole podcast when you first started speaking about i think he asked why why you've been studying consciousness and you yeah. explain you said it's important blah, blah blah i wanted to interject and say also it is everything and everybody takes it for granted because you can't not take it for granted you, it's yeah. happening and you don't every really realize second, milli, so every but you said that now so i wanted lucky uh, you, thank you for saying that cause i wanted to say that everyone takes it for granted that consciousness is even here two i wanted to say that is consciousness is consciousness a religion because if it is then that, that might, might be mine and that might be why i don't want to take psychedelics because i don't want to mess with my my my, my true right. Uh, consciousness and then free you said what if that's the real thing the reason why I know it's not one thing I say to everyone that always says to me oh yeah Jamie I'm telling you like I say because it's not a shared experience and everyone that takes like a list doesn't see the same thing someone might say oh my god I saw whatever they will say I had an ego death and like I, whatever. whatever you think you saw your brain showed you it and if someone else did it their brain will show them something different and also you only see what you you only see what you can see from your experience you've already experienced if you know what I'm saying but someone, is it life so, no, but somebody who somebody who's only ever lived in Tanzania, never left that country in their life, never yeah. been on the internet, never seen television, to see their if they take psychedelics, they're not going to see Donald Trump talking to them or something. They're not going to see something that you know what I mean. They're not going to see uh, Fortnite dance or something. They've never experienced it. Whereas if you have experienced seeing Donald Trump win an election and playing Fortnite and blah blah blah, you might take psychedelics and then see this little Fortnite character and whatever, and then you go whatever. But then you, know you just I mean? see the the thing that you have experienced. That's what I think. So I'm trying to say that it's not a shared experience. It's something that your brain but does. But then what is a shared experience? Something then? that we can agree on that we can both... Like, like now? Yeah, now in this room. Yeah, but okay. We can agree that the floor is not liquid. It's solid and we're standing on it. Because we're all in the room together. If we all took psychedelics now and we all said, oh my gosh, uh, like, oh, the floor so is liquid. Like we and said it and we, uh, okay, I get what you're saying. Then so I'll say, okay, cool, maybe we wouldn't, we wouldn't all share the experience yeah. that this is what this so is so it's not true which is why to I me think, yeah which is i think you're right and it's why that so people but people do say you know there's this there's two ideas about psychedelics i think the people that take them one is that it takes the filters off and they see reality more as it is you know that it's a more accurate direct way of experiencing things and i think that's for me that's not the right way to think about it for exactly the reason that, that you said everyone is going to have a different experience mm -hmm. and it's it's not revealing the underlying nature of of reality in any particularly um, transparent way but what it is doing is revealing how all our experiences are kind of dependent on what our brain is doing so for me it, it really reinforces this idea that, that consciousness is, is a biological phenomenon you know, it's not something that's sort of out there in some immaterial spiritual field you know it's something that brains do and if you change your brain you change your experience. My what theory, if we're not supposed to have shared experiences, though? 
And also, okay, in that sense... You just want to do you, psychedelics. You, He's trying to find an excuse to do psychedelics, you know. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I'll get to that, actually. Nah, so... I'm pussy. <laughs> Let's just be clear here, yeah? But that weed cake experience I had was horrific. Mm-hmm. It was so horrific for a couple of different reasons. One, I didn't even know that I was having it. Two, I don't even smoke weed. I don't smoke weed in God knows how long. Three, I had the probably the strongest weed cake. That this was a weed cake for real mm. stoners. And you can't yeah. get it out of your system. It's not what you can do. It was it. Yeah. it listen, it's it dumb. had me in a pickle. Yeah, and the fourth was I was in a not a good space in my life. Yeah, so add all of these things together. My trip was just not. It was horrible. But I also think, what if? What if I am in a good space in my life, whatever that means, and it's, it's controlled, I know what I'm doing, do you understand what I'm saying? Like all of these other, the opposites of all of these other things, what does that experience, what does that experience feel like? Mm-hmm. Because mine was so bad, what is it like when it is good? On the opposite spectrum. Not, yeah. yeah. So then, and then obviously I hear about like, obviously, by the way, I need this to be clear, not uh, there's no way I'm telling anyone to take weed cakes or mushrooms or whatever it is like don't yeah I'm, I'm, these are the words that are coming from my <laughs> mouth and my thoughts and my feelings I'm not telling you to think the same as me or do what I'm doing or whatever figure out who you are as a person and don't do it off the basis of me yeah but there is a part of me that's like you know what Try a young mushroom and see what's going on. Just a young one and just see, just see, just a light one, just to see. I'm good. But I do. I'm good. But I do also think that like, the way that my mind is, is that like, I'm not, I don't have like a mad addictive personality. So whatever it is, no matter how good it is, how euphoric it is or whatever, it's not going to make me want to well, do Well, I mean, that. they but are. There's, there's one thing about them, which is they're not addictive. Stop yeah. selling it to him, please. Yeah, yeah but again. Stop. <laughs> 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 I swear this guy, he's going to be, he's making us say all the right things. They are, yeah, listen. But, um, but also what I was going to say is as well, is like, we could go to the dream machine very quickly and explain to the people exactly what a dream machine is. But because that also feel, that also fits into the the, sh- the shared experience that we don't really share. Mm. Like we're in the same space and we are taking part in the dream machine, yeah. but we all see different things. The dream machine was something that we actually went to today. Can you explain to people exactly what that is and what you're working on? Yeah, sure. It's, it's I was really pleased that you're able to come. Um, the dream machine, it's a very simple thing. It's, in essence, it's a um, bunch of flickering lights, stroboscopic lights, and if you get the brightness and the frequency right, and you sit in front of them with your eyes closed, you will have, pretty much everybody will have interesting visual experiences with your eyes closed, like colors and shapes. I mean, you guys would say in a minute what what you saw, but all sorts of things, right? It's a pretty old um, device. The original Dream Machine was developed in the 1950s and 60s by an artist called Brian Geisen. He worked with a neuroscientist called Walt, um, William Walter. And it sort of was a fringe thing for decades. And then a couple of years ago, I got involved as the scientist on this new project, which brought together scientists and philosophers and engineers and musicians. We had uh, John Hopkins, who was doing the music for us, and architects to build a collective dream machine, which was a, a space where 20 or 30 people at a time could go in, sit down very comfortably, be guided through it. So not just thrown in there and mm. here's, an, here's something happened and then thrown back out onto the street, but guided through it. Um, so, you would, so people would go in, sit down with others. So here's, it's the shared experience, but your eyes are closed, the light starts, everybody has their own in a inner, inner journey and experiences things they generally weren't weren't expecting to experience because all that's out there is just flickering white light. Mm. And then afterwards, they go into this other shared space called a reflection zone where you can draw and, and write down and talk and share um, what what happened, and then notice what was similar and and what was different. But what's what's really striking about the dream machine is. Um, 
is how immersive and, and how encompassing these experiences can be. You know, people describe it as sort of explosions of colour mm. in the mind and accompanied with deep emotional responses too. And the artist who developed the thing back in this back in the fifties in a really lo fi version, which was just a, a bright light hanging above a turntable and there was this cardboard tube with slits cut in it, so you'd get a you know, kind of semi stroboscopic effect. Now he said that everyone in the dream machine, everyone is the artist in the dream machine. Because it's your own brain that's making the imagery. It's not out there in, in the world. And over 2022, working with, with this group, Collective Act, who, who developed it, we were in London, we were in Belfast and Cardiff, and overall we had about 40,000 people come through this experience. And one of the things we noticed was that it really ignited this curiosity in people about the mind and the brain and about consciousness exactly in this challenging this taking for granted thing because if mm. you go into the dream machine you close your eyes and suddenly all this stuff happens um, it makes it very clear in the first person that our brains are powerful and they can do all this stuff and they're going to be doing it not just in the dream machine but everywhere all the time and so that's been a brilliant sort of um, legacy of it for, for me is, is that so many more people have this deep appreciation now of this everyday miracle of mm. consciousness. Yeah, we can't even really discuss the exactly what we saw in that because I know we don't want to give it away. Yeah, it's a prototype session as well, right? So we're yeah, we're yeah, and also we don't even want to influence anyone that does go and yeah. go to see it. We don't want to influence what it is that they see. But what I will say is, yeah, that it definitely triggered feeling in however way that you like what like as i was saying to you there was like a certain thing that i saw that made me feel like super like like so relaxed and then there was like something else that made me feel like mad ap apprehensive in that mm. but it was interesting seeing all of these things based upon white light with my eyes closed though do you know what i mean my, bra interesting to my brain wants to question everything all the time. Like I said, when I first got in there, I was questioning if this is a punked thing, if it's real, is something <laughs> yeah. going to happen? Is, like, have I been tricked to come in there for something else? My brain, I wanted a peek. I wanted oh, to did you think I was setting you up just for a quick I moment. thought we might be all get set up. I don't know. I, I, that's, like my, my, once the thought ends in my brain, I have got to, you know what I mean? Like everything, I, before we went in there, we, that's what we said. I said, anything I think about, I have to find out about it as soon as you think about it I have to find out about it remember we were talking about kissing both cheeks blah blah like once you need to think about something I have to think I have to uh, find out about it but then I started to like then I wanted to when I realised it was working because I thought it was not going to work I thought I was going to be in there I don't mind if it doesn't work I'll sit through and we'll talk about how it's meant to work when I started realising it's working I started to wanted to know how it's working because I wanted to start I started to think is this the frame rate we see at <laughs> because you know at first it's it like my, my eyes were like my, I thought my eyelids were like wobbling like yeah, yeah, yeah. thing yeah. then I thought wait a minute let me look, look up and look down to make sure I'm cool that was cool then, I, then, then the flickering started happening a bit but then it started to become a pure image of things happening then I started to think is this the frame rate I'm looking is it flickering at the frame rate of sight <laughs> so like right, yeah, I can't right. see the darkness anymore mm -hmm. then, I, then I start then I'm, I'm trying to start, I don't want to get too much into it but I try to see the darkness like I said like I try to start seeing the image in the opposing light you know what I mean like I'm seeing the image in the light I want to see the image of the darkness if you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm trying to see the flicker if you know what I'm saying I can't explain man I can't explain no I hear that <laughs> too much I, 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 we obviously it was sick like trying to control it control yeah. freak trying to control it and see what I was trying to trying to control what I'm seeing mm -hmm. rather than let let whatever I'm seeing dictate what's going on what? and that was partly because I was a bit anxious I was a bit like, yeah yeah same same. So it, yeah, we was we were quite nervous a little bit, just a tad yeah. bit because yeah. I didn't know what to expect. But what are you ex what are you hoping to get from it, like so, results wise? I mean, results wise. So because I mean, one of like in the lab, as a scientist, we can get maybe a few people, a, you know, ten people a week or something doing mm. something like that. The scale is 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 detailed, but but small numbers. With this dream machine, with tens of thousands of people, we've, we've got an incredible perspective on how different people's experiences are. Like, 
And that's the interesting thing for me. Everyone is back to this shared and individuality thing. Everyone is going through exactly the same situation. It's the same light, it's the same sound, it's the same place. But everyone is coming out with something different. And by looking at that, and we've only just started, when we've got something like people drew. I, I was really surprised by how keen people were to, to draw. We had some like paper and crayons there today as well. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of it's enticing, isn't it? You kind of just when I left draw. when I left there, I had red <laughs> fingers, yeah. <laughs> And I thought it was something from the dream machine. <laughs> I'm like, I was thinking, wait a minute. Oh my gosh. I was driving, I looked at my hand, I didn't touch the steering wheel. I thought, I'm not touching the steering wheel because I don't know why I've got red fingers. <laughs> what happened in that thing? I thought, oh, if I didn't remember we drew with crayons, I would have bugged out. <laughs> I was thinking something about that experience made my fingers go red, I swear. I was looking at my hand like, what, they're red, they're really red. So I was back, but yeah, I remember drawing, that was good as well. Yeah, that was good. That but was good, yeah, yeah. I was that thinking was just good. now, you know, meditation. People say they meditate. I can never, you can you can never tell if someone meditates. They can say, yeah, I meditate. They could be lying. Same way you could ask someone if they're conscious and they could say, I'm conscious. Mm. You can't tell if people are conscious. They could be, it could be a robot, whatever. This is like guaranteed meditation. Mm. Is there, any, is there mm. anybody Is there anybody that goes in there, close their eyes and says, it's not working? Yeah, that's impossible. Very that few, very few. It does happen. Does it? does it? happen and that's very interesting. They're so not conscious. Try. They Ooh. they have like well I wouldn't get <laughs> in the back they are conscious. But, but I mean we've we've had people in who are who are color blind and um they will see colours they haven't seen ever before. We've had people in who are nearly blind mm. completely. We had we, we had this group of of, of partially sighted. Yeah, partially sighted, but even people who are registered blind, they often have a little bit of sensitivity yeah. left in their eyes. It's just not sort of useful in normal life. But that's enough. And so that was really moving to me because they they were they were quite blown away by the experience because suddenly they're having these vivid visual experiences mm. which as a blind person they just don't expect to be much part of their lives anymore. And then on the other hand, yes, yeah, some people, very few, but some people go in there and say, Well, that wasn't you know, nothing nothing happened. And I want to know, I want to get these people into the lab so I can record their brains. Yeah, the right. Because that's, that's what we're doing in the lab. So y y it, in the dream machine thing that, that you guys were at, we can have a lot of people, but we're not going to record your brain activity at the same time. That's, yeah. that's too hard. But in the lab, we can do, we can do that. So what, what, we are, what we have been doing for a while is a sort of reduced version where we have people sit in front of a sort of lab type dream machine. Yeah. They have a, an experience um, and we record their brain activity. And what you said a minute ago about the frame rate of vision, mm. something like that might actually be going on because the, the frequency that, that works, one of the frequencies that works well is roughly the frequency at which the visual part of the brain naturally oscillates. Like our brains just oscillate all the time. There are lots of different frequencies that go on and they're different in different parts of the brain. And in the visual part of the brain, it's about roughly 10 hertz, 10 cycles per second. And it's, that's around the range at which the dream machine sort of works. 10 FPS. So it's, it's, we're wet. it's, it's like, <laughs> in, and there's been, there's, it's, still, it's still very controversial, but there's all these experiments to try to like um, figure out if we basically see you know, in discrete snapshots yeah. of, of, yeah, 100 milliseconds, which would be 10 FPS, and whether things that happen across the boundaries are perceived as happening at different times, and things that happen within like a frame are experienced as happening simultaneously. It's, it's really hard to do, and, and there's there's no agreement about this. But the idea, I think, is is very interesting. And of course, we wouldn't if that's if that is what's going on. We would never ourselves notice this frame rate mm -hmm. apart from in weird situations, because of course. You know, it's that's that's how vision works. We we're not looking at our brain doing vision. Vision is the result of our brain doing what it does. I've got another question for you now, as well. I just realised something. Time. Time and consciousness. Time and <laughs> time and consciousness are linked because experiencing is. I, can't, I don't know, I haven't, got, I haven't got the worst to speak right now. But basically, you were talking about that and I started thinking about slow motion. I started thinking about like slow motion videos you watch on YouTube with like bullet time, things like that. And how fascinating it is because 
it happens and you see it. Like say they, somebody throws a water balloon and you see it slow motion hit the wall and spread out and then you see it burst and you see the balloon go around the water and then the water stays the same shape as the balloon then it starts to go into droplets and stuff. If I throw a water balloon at the wall, you see that anyway. Mm. But you don't get to experience it in that time. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you see you see what you saw on a slow-mo camera but it happens so fast that you don't take it in the all same. information. So when you see it in slow-mo, it's like you get to experience consciousness slowly and it feels great and people that's why people love watching slow-mo videos because mm -hmm. it's like we see this anyway someone getting punched in the face and you see their face ripple and their lips cheek and everything move you see that in boxing all the time but when they show it on a slow-mo camera you're like, like oh because you're getting to experience what you experience anyway but you're getting to experience it. it's almost like adding isn't it isn't it food. like um isn't it like obviously there's consciousness but then there's like the processing so like if something happens mad quick you're obviously conscious of the fact that that's happened mm. and you process it a certain type of way but when you see it slowly you get to you, get you have to, more time in you, you have more conscious time to process it yes so it, so it feels different and what else, what did you say oh yeah the frames of the frames per second of the thing so yeah boom so another thing i was thinking is how we see because i was thinking this when i was there i was thinking this is only stimulating sight Right? Oh, we have, and sound. I can't give away too much. Right, basically, I was thinking, when we see, how we see, I don't remember if I got this correctly, like the pinhole camera thing where the mm -hmm. image goes upside down mm -hmm. and then your brain turns it round. Mm -hmm. and It doesn't have to turn it round. Oh, your brain doesn't have to turn it round. There's nobody inside looking yeah, at the thing in the exactly. brain. Exactly, so it just gives it to you and you just yeah. take it as the right yeah. way round. Yeah. Cool. And who's to say we're not upside down anyway? Like, who's to say you're not upside down? <laughs> who's to say, who's to, anyway, whatever. Right. <laughs> anyway, exactly. Right. So, that. so, uh, so, um, so yeah, I was thinking that when when I am seeing what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. is that, do we know if that is my brain just having fun or is that actually light hitting the back of my eye and the, 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 the what's it called? The canvas in the back of my eye yeah. being influenced by what's happening, if you know what I'm saying. Because... Because it is real. What I'm seeing, it looks like I'm... I don't, I can't give away too much, you know what I mean? But when we're looking at... Oh, in like, the dream machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're seeing yeah. things. And I'm like, what? Yeah. No, it's definitely to do with the with the light. So we, the, the, the light is still getting into your eye. And it's still affecting your retina, you know, which is the sensitive yeah. bit at the back of your eye. And that activity is being transmitted to your brain. And your brain's just... Your brain's just uh, What's the word when you when you translate? Your brain's just translating it into whatever it feels to translate at the time. It's trying to make sense of it. And the, the, this, the thing, the thing, I think the, one, the way I've come to think about it is, is it's a really peculiar situation for the brain. So the way I always think as a, as a neuroscientist, I was it's a bit odd, but I try to imagine being my own brain. Mm. What what. What, that's what, what I did. What I would do. That's what I did. That's when I started and thinking about epilepsy. I started say, that's when I started saying that. Yeah. I, started, I, I started to think that my brain, like. I'm happy that, that it did the, I don't want to give away too much, but the beginning, you know what I mean? Whatever we did at the beginning, yeah. everything, that was really good because it made me realize, it made my brain know, don't worry. Don't worry, it's gonna be yeah. all right. So, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> but if you, imagining being your brain, so you, you're there, the brain knows the eyes are closed because the brain you know, knows what's happening mm. to the body. And normally when your eyes are closed, you're not getting any visual experience, right? You don't, the, the light isn't bright enough or organized enough or anything. Mm. But in the dream machine, light, something is still happening. The light is still getting in and it's at the right frequency that it's activating your visual cortex. So from the brain's perspective, there's a lot of stuff going on in the visual part of the brain, which is at the back, but it's not expecting anything to be going on. So it has to make sense of it. And it can't make sense of it in terms of stuff in the world because there's no... You know, there's kind of it's fairly unstructured. It's not like there's light coming at different angles and mm. from, with different reflecting off different things. It's just this big oscillation that's coming into the brain. So the way it can make sense of it, the only thing giving structure to the patterns of activity in the brain is the brain itself. It's like the brain is looking at itself. Mm. That's what I think is going on in the dream machine. The brain. That's that. Normally we see through and with the brain but in this case it might be and this is the, this is the hypothesis that we're working on in the lab it might be that instead of looking with the brain we 
we end up seeing the brain itself or aspects of the brain itself become like they surface into our experience. And that's fascinating because, you know, the brain is, is such a, a mysterious thing in a sense, like it's the only part of the body where there are no pain receptors. Mm -hmm. We feel pain because of the brain, brain. but but the brain doesn't feel pain. And so, you know, in, in, in brain surgery, you, you, t you often keep, you don't use general anesthesia quite often. You keep people awake. I think I've seen that before as well. What is that? Someone playing an instrument while they're getting yeah. operated oh, on yeah. to see. Yeah, so you can see that you don't take out yeah. an important part when you're yeah. taking stuff out. Was it yours? <clears throat> I think it was your one of your things I was watching. I'm sure sure it was you. Where, <clears throat> and if it's not, then I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. But they did this thing where they had a guy and his hand. Oh, yeah. What was it? Like, so they had the, the hand yeah. out. But then, what was it? Someone like, sent me this. Someone sent me this. Someone sent me this. It's the. It's called the rubber hand illusion. The rubber hand illusion. I want to do it. Someone sent me this. People, for people who like are not like for yeah. the audio listeners, explain what that is and okay. what that was about. So <laughs> actually, we're we're involved in it. Is it's an effect that we can generate in the lab, and there's actually rubber hand wars going on in academia at the moment. Like people disagreeing quite violently about what's going on, and we're on one side. But what <laughs> what what it is is um, it's an illusion of body ownership. So what happens is you put somebody's, let's say, hold on, get the, um, which one to get? There's, that one's quite good. The, the one at the top now, no, that, that one. Yeah, 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 that's quite a good one. This is the one someone sent me, I didn't believe it. Okay, so basically what we're watching here now is, yeah, there's a man, how do I explain this? He's got his hands on the table, and he's got one hand over a, a so board. He's been black. One so of his hands is so out of his, yeah, out yeah, of one his of hands is out of his sight. Yeah. But there's a rubber hand in place of where his actual hand would be if it was there. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a rubber hand. Yeah. So, oh yeah, so they covered his... Oh yes, they, even looking at this... I know. <laughs> I want to do, do it already, I, I do so bad that it kind of triggers me a bit. Like, I do think it's going to work. So... So what's happening now is the guy is now stroking <laughs> with a ruler, mad. Um, but <laughs> his hand that's out of sight and the rubber hand in front of him that's at the like same time. At the same time, in yeah. the same place, in the same exact place. He's now probably feeling like is he at this? It's, point it's like he's training like, his brain to to think that that rubber hand is his hand because yeah. everything your hand is feeling that rubber hand is. You're seeing it visually. So also, the idea, if you again, type in rubber hand illusion, by the way, it's the second video down in the search. Go on, sorry. The, if, if, again, taking the perspective of this guy's brain, the, the guy's brain is seeing a hand that looks like a hand and is roughly where his real hand should be. It's feeling touch because his real hand is being touched. Yes. And it's seeing this fake hand being touched in the same way. So from the brain's this is the, this is the standard story. From the brain's perspective, it's like, oh, you know, see hands, feel touch, same touch. That must be my hand. He's also just removed um, the ruler from. Yeah, this is the part I don't believe. I don't know if this is real because they removed the hand. Yeah, they stopped sight. touching so, the real yeah. hand so, and they're touching the fake hand, and they and they're saying that he can still. His brain was still yeah. giving the feeling of touch. I want to yeah, do it. Again, the standard rubbing. story here is now that he's sort of assimilated this hand into his experience of what the body is. That that it, that it's still there. Um, and I don't know about this video, but there's there's other ways that you can test it, which which are kind of fun. But it is. But it he's, is he's now basically at some point in this video, because he's still tricking the mind. He's going to come out and he's going to have a hammer or some yes. shit. <coughs> I think that will work on me. I think that hammer bit will get me. Right. Because well, he, if you do it, and for this, long this is similar enough, to the dream machine. If you do it, it for long enough, your brain is just locked into what's happening. Well, what, so what? Here we go. Yeah. What's he doing now? Here we go. He's, he's about to. He's about to get. It looks like a light hammer. No, there's light. I think he taps every finger. Like you can feel this on your fingers. Uh, okay. Oh, this is a really extended version. Yeah, that's what I said. I, okay. I, this, I've seen the version before. This one here, I don't know. If, I didn't know if they were just trying to uh, copy what they've seen on YouTube and make it like super, super exaggerated. Yeah. These, these things Do you know why this is so actually. weird to me? Yeah, is because I'm looking at this and that rubber hand. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling like if someone smashed the rubber hand with something. I would still the same way like, the same way as you see now. Yes, yeah the same now. way as if you and see like see. you know you know like the Jackass video or something when yeah. somebody crashes into a wall something like you feel a little shudder like in yeah. your body like you feel that little thing yeah you'd get that from a rubber hand now because you've seen it being treated as a real hand yeah 
Look, oh, look. So basically... His hand's moving. His hand's move. So basically, this my man's like hitting the... the oh, um, I see, yeah. As he's touching the rubber hand, his, the uh, rubber his real hand's with glitching each, on that same... Each, with the ham. I don't know what the fuck that is. But every time he's touching a finger, his actual hand that's out of sight, the finger that he's touching on the rubber one is actually moving in, in the hand out of sight, if that makes sense. But, but the, reason why this, the reason why I think this is similar to the dream machine is because it's your bri- you're being blinded to something you're blinded so your eyes are shut or you're, you're being blinded to where your arm is for real and you're being told that what you're seeing here is real and accept it so like you're shut your eyes of the gym machine and then now things are happening and my brain's saying but I know it's not there because your eyes are shut but then your brain but then you're still being said nah it's real because look it's there so you, 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 either, you either try and choose to ignore it that's what I was trying to do for the first like five minutes I was thinking nah I, I, whatever I'm seeing I don't, like you're saying it's not going to work on me like, I'm going to ignore it or you can go, you know what? Give in and let me experience it. Let me see what this is like. And that's what I ended up doing. I ended up just mm-hmm. giving in and being like, let me see how far I can take this. Yeah. You know? And that's what this is. This is like giving in and seeing how far you can take it. Yeah. With a hammer, like, is your brain going to believe this? So basically, what, what is this essentially, like in a nutshell, what is, what are we learning about that in a nutshell? In a nutshell, what we're learning is that the experience of what our body is, which seems so natural that, again, we take it for granted. Like, this mm. is my hand. I can hold it in front of me. It just seems obvious. Just there spent, was a hammer bit. Yeah. Yeah, did that there was a hammer bit. Yeah. What things like this show is that we shouldn't take that for granted and that the brain is working all the time to construct, to figure out, okay, what part of the world is the body and, and what is not? And there are, there are also there are lots of um, clinical conditions. So people who have amputations, they often have these phantom limbs. Right? Mm, yeah, so yeah, everything yeah. you say yeah. I want to talk Feel about. Oh my gosh. Pain in a limb that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. And then there are people that have, there's another condition which, is, which I think is so weird, which is called, it's got a very long name, it's called somatoparaphrenia. And in this, in this instance, people, they still have their arms, but they feel they belong to somebody else. So I might feel like my left arm actually is part of your body, mm. which is really weird. And you can show them that their arm is joined to their shoulder, but that doesn't change it. They still feel their arm is belonging to a different body. So put, all put, of these put, things so, show- Sorry to interrupt you. Put this on the screen as well, please. Um, so paraphenia <laughs> is a delusion, uh, is a, de- a delusional belief whereby a patient feels that a paralyzed limb does not belong to his body. The symptom is ty- typically associated with unilateral, unilateral neglect and most frequently with, I don't know what that is. Anosognosia. A- anosognosia. What is that? I don't even know. That means not knowing that you're paralyzed. And it's anosognosia. 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 It's like, it's when, so there's something that can happen in brain injury where people have a deficit, like they might lose vision, but they might still say that they can see. Oh, I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. nuts. And you can even ask them questions, and they'll say something. They'll make, their brain makes. Yeah. They don't know they're making it up, but their brain, will, their brain will tell them to say this, and they'll say, "Yeah, no, I can see that." Da, da, da. And like in their head, they think they can see something. Yeah, That's I can't remember where I've, where have I seen that. I've watched too many things, but that reminds me of when I sleep on my front like that, and I wake up and this arm is dead. Yes, absolutely dead. Like it's, yeah. it's like I said, arm made out of marble, and I, I get, I do, I always get, I always do this. I always do that because I think like it's like it's like carrying a rubber latex arm. I just do this. I always go like, is this? Can I even feel this? And I think I sometimes bite. I think I don't. I don't know if I'm biting it too much. I don't know if I, when 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 I get feeling back, I'm gonna be like, ah, that like, always happens to me. But yeah, I can kind of think that how if it was paralyzed forever, how I would feel like it is someone's arm. This is someone's arm. Like it's heavy. Yeah. I can't feel the weight Bodies of it. Are though. Heavy. I mean, this is the thing yeah. we don't notice, but this is. But yeah, I mean, this, but that, that rubber handle, that's what, it's getting at a similar thing, right? It's just getting at how it, the brain can quite easily be somewhat tricked into changing the experience of the body. Like things that aren't the body become the body, things that mm. are the body and not treated as the body anymore. Um, I have to say though, because we, we, I, I used to talk about the rubber handle illusion quite a lot and talk about it in terms of the brain putting together like things that you see with with touch, things that you feel, and it all being a matter of getting that right, like integrating this, the stroking of the fake hand with seeing the, the fake hand. But my um, one of my colleagues, friends at Sussex, a guy called Pete Lush, 
he thought the rubber hand illusion and things like it were rolling back to the earlier part of our chat things more more to do with hypnosis hypnotizability that basically in a rubber hand illusion you're putting someone in a situation and you're oh, giving yeah. them a very very strong you said it yeah, yeah. you're giving a very strong expectation about what they should experience like here's a fake hand here i'm going to stroke it and i'm yeah. stroking your real hand it's a, even if you don't like write down you should experience this as your hand mm. it's pretty clear Suggestive, setup yeah. Yeah. and what pete did <laughs> and I, I still can't believe he actually did this he he did the rubber hand illusion on 420 people um over the course of a few weeks and for each person measured how hypnotizable they are and that's a scale you can measure oh right? yeah of course and and it correlates so people who are more hypnotizable they're more susceptible to the rubber hand, hand illusion. illusion. Okay, and those are so it's that. probably something to do with that. But well, it still well, happens, well. and it's still a fascinating example of how changeable things that we take for granted about ourselves are. I got another question for you. Could could we one day take our mind, place it in someone else's body, and activate consciousness? So there's an, there's an old joke about um, brain transplants, which it's the only transplantation operation where you'd rather be the donor than the recipient. You'd yeah. rather be the donor, yes. 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 Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's not a very funny joke. Yeah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being a recipient is dead, basically. It's dead as well. You know, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, be, to be fair, if you were ever going to do it, if most people were ever wanting to do that, they would probably want to put themselves in, in the body of a one percenter. Mm. And the only a one percenter is there's not much people mm. that are gonna be down to do that because that's the one percent. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? But it's an interesting one though, still. I was thinking when you was talking about psychedelics and anesthetics made me realise the correlation that anesthetics turns it off, psychedelics plays with it to a point where I don't know you could call it heightened or what. Could psychedelics be used? To d uh, no, another thing as well is consciousness is also electrical impulses. Is that proven? Is that is that a fact? Well, it's Synapses not that it is, but without oh, it, them, it's, they're it's, necessary. Yeah. You know, if the brain's not electrically active, yeah, there's so, no consciousness. Uh, I just thought just now, I thought I was, I was, I was, I was going to say psychedelics could jumpstart consciousness, but it wouldn't yeah, but be. It would be electric that jumpstarts consciousness. Well, but could but could we do that though? Still take the. Brain. If somebody's dead, give them psychedelics to see if they come back alive. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I hesitate to keep psychedelics and electric oh, elec elec and, and elec things. electric what's it called what's them things defibrillator yeah, mm -hmm. but then and with psychedelics, psychedelics like put a mushroom in their mouth like, that's a jump start and a half the, the, <laughs> some, some of my colleagues basically some of my colleagues suggested doing basically that um, but not for not in death but mm. for people who are in a in a coma right or a vegetative state so mm. people who you know they have really severe brain injury yeah they they often go through sleep and wake cycles, but again, consciousness is different from just being awake, right? Yeah. They can be awake, but there's nobody home. There's no consciousness going on. And there was this idea that, actually on some of these measures that we were talking about, like, you know, the putting a number to it, this is work that we did um, a few years ago. We measured the level of consciousness in psychedelics, and it's, it goes up. It's like above waking, mm. normal waking. So this does potentially suggest that yeah you can, perhaps you could use psychedelics to to help people recover from vegetative state it as far as i know the experiment didn't get done i i was not very positive about it because mm. i think it's like it's ethically very well, dubious. Yeah. um but i mean it's just to say that that these sorts of ideas they're not they're not that outlandish. I mean, yeah, but it's, I still don't even think it's outlandish to put your, some, your brain in someone else's body and activate their consciousness. You don't think that's outlandish? Well, no. I feel, I feel like at some point you're going to be able happen. to do that. There's nothing in oh, principle we didn't talk about that the brain. prevents huh? that. There's nothing in principle that, that prevents that. It's a very... Yeah, if, if it were to happen, it's still a kind of a thought experiment right now. But are they trying... Is it, okay, when you say it's a thought experiment, yeah. are you having these meetings... Like, do you have the other <laughs> like, 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 meetings? Where yeah, we, but like, like, is that, is, that a convers, is that a conversation that you're having? Like, what, wait, seriously? To, to what? So, no, but I know what you mean. No, so 
Yeah, well, yes and no, right? So I think, I mean, I'm not personally having those conversations, but I very much hope they are happening because it's this kind of thing that you need to have ethics about before it gets too late because people will do these experiments. There are people doing these kinds of head transplant experiments mm. in other animals. There's a brain chip already now as well. And and it's like, you know, you extrapolate from what's possible now. And it's certainly not impossible that these kinds of things could be done in, in humans. And so I really hope people are talking about this, not just to go sort of ahead in some like, you know, boosterish way, let's just do it because it sounds cool. But talking about it in terms of like, should we, you know, what what regulation do we need to put around this before yeah, it happens? What would what would society look like if you could do that? You then essentially, I'm thinking so far into the future, but then like, already we're at a place here where people are scared to get old. So they're doing everything that they can to look young. Yeah. There was even a study recently, I think I was talking about on the pod, where they re- tried to reduce the looking age of a rat or some shit like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. So you could see this is the direction that we're going in. People are feeling like they're injecting themselves of all different types of stuff to look young. And obviously, we probably don't talk enough about death in our no. society. So people are scared of it. So what? then, what happens is if we continue to not talk about it, really, we're going to brain transplant into. We just go, and then <laughs> then it goes into like everyone trying to live, signing themselves up to just live forever, as long I as they possibly can. That's the can. worst thing ever. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm glad you say that because I, I think there's like th- this. There's this huge wellness industry now, right? longevity industry, and what do you think about that? Well, I. I think there's, there's, it's like all these new technologies, there's good and bad aspects, right? Like machine learning, AI, whatever. There's obviously, I think it's a good thing if more people live healthier lives for their lifespan. You know, currently, most, a lot of people spend their last 10 or 20 years in a state of very poor health, where mm. life is pretty difficult. Um, and so I think making sure that, that our lifespan is mainly a healthy one is, is, is all good. But then when you start talking about extending the lifespan, I mean, for the whole of human history, there's been huge amounts of inequality, but the one great equaliser is that everybody dies. Mm. And there's variance too, like rich mm. people tend to live longer than poor people, but not like 10 times longer. Mm. And not everybody, always. But if that gets disrupted, and if it becomes possible that through accumulation of wealth you can basically infinitely extend your your lifespan yeah the the dis, the social disruption and inequality that can result from that is is just like i mean that that puts into the shade every other form of inequality Policy, that we've yeah. ever had before so i'm quite worried about it yeah, and again i just think it needs to be we need to be extremely careful because it it seems like it is science fiction but you mentioned these experiments with rats. That there, there are things that that are being explored. That currently, you know, in in rats and other animals, you can extend life a little bit by doing quite dramatic things that we probably wouldn't want to do, like not eating at all for you know, for yeah. for long periods of time. Um, but it's a hard problem to because evolution evolution basically doesn't care about keeping us alive forever you know once we're old enough to, to reproduce Dude, yeah. and look after our kids and we're, we're, we're basically, we're I'm basically yeah. useless from that one thing on, while you've been here you've taught it on reproduce yeah. and now let them do that one thing and learn a better thing and get better and better and better one thing you said at the beginning look in the mirror and realizing you're going to die one day and you saying living forever has triggered me to remember i remember when my mum t- said to me it was sitting really and my sister was like oh mom like how much she asked something like oh what when I'm older and da da da, mum's like, no, nah, I'll be gone, I'll be dead. And my sister realised mum was going to die. Like, that whole day for her was a downer. She was crying that whole day. She was so upset when she realised my mum one day is going to die. I, me- I remember, and I wasn't the one crying, but I remember it. It stuck with me forever. I've never even thought about it till just now. And I think that that kind of probably triggered in me as well, from a young age, to think about death and to think about uh, how biased I am for the benefit of me because I am me and I'm always me I always wake up as me and I've been me as long as I can remember so I care about me so much and I'm so biased and thinking about 
objectively if that is even fair like why should I want to like how I want to live forever or why and then I think from a young age I came to terms with it I think I came to terms with death full stop from so young that I realised that if I didn't die, it'll be that'll be the shittest thing ever. To bits. To, yeah, it'll be the shittest thing ever. First of all, secondly, all that matters is uh, like everyone's everyone always gonna like they want to die, but everyone else is gonna die. So like when even when you're dying, why are you like oh I don't want to die, bro? Stay alive for what? To see everyone else, everyone's gonna die. Doesn't matter. All that matters is that what you get done while you're here, and the fact that you're gonna die makes you being here even more important and more um hundred percent it makes it better the fact that you know i'm not here for long right so i started to care about that from such a young age that now not that i don't care about dying but i i've i'm cool with it i'm yeah. so cool with but it you know what i mean big, I, I, I have the biggest except like i can accept it to the highest degree yeah. like i know my, i'm i'm incredibly close with my mum and my dad like i lost my stepdad two years ago who was my dad I was very fortunate in that sense that I had him in my life and also my dad in my life as well, yeah. But like, and that was difficult. He died, died in my arms, yeah. But I think I just, not, I'm just, I know that it's going to be hard. I say this all the time, like, mm. it's going to be tough. But I know that I'm going to be okay, though. Do you get what I'm saying? I know that I'll find what a way be to be okay because my mum dying okay. and my dad dying. Yeah. Because... This is just this is actually just the main guarantee of life. Yeah. And I think the more that I get to talk about it, the more that we get to talk about it. It doesn't chain take the pain away. But I think that the the acceptance becomes stronger. I'm always curious to know or to understand what it looks like when you do die. And like when we was talking about um like the um Anastasia thing, mm-hmm. sometimes I think to myself, well, like, is that what it's like? Even if you are breathing, but you're you're dead, mm. though. Really, yeah, you're breathing, but your your consciousness is not active, so you're just dead. And then I also just think as well, like, it would be so weird to take a brain and put it in someone else's body. And if everyone did that, could you imagine how it even changes the dynamics of friendships, for example? So like. Let's just say, for example, now, like I have friends that are women, and they're my friends. But then, if one of them dies, and then now she comes back as Beyonce, now I'm, <laughs> I'm in a whole different predicament now because she's. But in my mind, this is new, yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's buff. <laughs> but before, this was just my friend. So, and I didn't see the buffness. Because that's just my brethren. But then you died, and then you signed a thing. And you're back as And then now else. you're back as this. And I'm like, whoa. So I have to now get used to- Who is that person? And, and I so can't chop. That, I've already come to terms as well is that, I, I, like, I don't know why, like, I think it takes me, I don't know if it takes me time or it takes me a certain amount of thinking or what it takes. But it takes something for me to get back into the frame of mind I was in when I was thinking something before. Because now you've got me back into a, mind, a frame of mind where I was before. When I remember, I remember thinking that I am not me. This, you know what I mean? I, I, like I am my consciousness. Right. I am my consciousness. Because like, people are like, oh, I'm me, like, oh, I'm an African boy, whatever. But like, oh, I've got two arms, whatever. But if you get into an accident and you lose your arm, lose a leg, lose whatever, whatever, you don't keep it and say, oh, it's mine, it's me, I need it. It's gone, Go it's on. gone. You have no control over it no more. It's not there, it's not you, you're still you. So I was thinking, how much can you take away? I should have wrote all these things down. Nothing. It's all coming back. How much can you take away of yourself until you're not you anymore? Or Nothing. You, or if people have, you know, people have a syndrome where they're locked in their body. Yeah. They can't move anything, totally paralyzed. Like they can just about shed a tear when they're frustrate for out of frustration, but they're still them. Consciousness is well, the they're soul. Still them. They're, they're Maybe consciousness them. is the soul. Well, Maybe uh, that's the thing. You know when people die? Yeah. You see when someone dies, yeah? When you see a dead body straight away, you still see the person, right? Mm-hmm. But then after one, right? after Okay, so when you say like someone died, mm. like God forbid someone walked in and died, mm. they would still just be Oh my god! Like this person just help died. him, help him. Yeah, you'll still be like, yeah, come on. But then, if you came back in the room, maybe six hours later or two days later, there's something that is unexplainable that has gone, and it makes it evident that 
This that's is just the soul. Though. That's perception again. That's the well, no. That's the it is. No, yes, yes, it is. You're, you're making. I think you're making a lot of. You're projecting a lot onto that situation. Assumptions, yes, but that's that's that's, that's that's But I think what you were saying about how much that what what we'll get back to the soul, but like how much of the self can go, and you, you mentioned this locked in syndrome, yeah. which is which is really a fascinating example, and it's, it's tragic for people who have it. It's like an extreme form of paralysis. Most people can move their eyes still, but that that's from this one guy, um, Jean Michel Bobby, I think he was called. He wrote a book while he was locked in by by just moving his eyes about what oh, the old shit. computer like looking at oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It became a film diving bell and the butterfly and um so their experience of self is going to be similar in some ways like they've got the same memories mm. and maybe the same kind of personality but some aspects of the self are changed because yeah. the body doesn't Physical respond anymore. Gone, yeah, yeah. and then other people there's another case i talk about this case in my own book about a um a guy who had a, a brain infection and he lost the ability to lay down any new memory. So he's living in this kind of permanent present of about seven seconds. Can't lay down anything new. This really happened? This really happened. Oh my God. He's goodness. still alive. He's in his late 80s now. This happened in the 1980s, I think. So it's been a long time. And he is still unable to remember anything In that film or something? It sounds like one. It, it sounds like a be, film and a guy has to like keep writing things down because he's not going to remember. Memento. Memento. Or something. Yeah, something. A, one of the early Christopher Nolan films. But, but this guy, the other, so he's, he's, he's again, he's lost one element of what each of us would, would call the self. Like, mm. this string of memories that, yeah. that comprise our identity as a person with a name. But then for him, other aspects of the self are still there. Like, yeah. he still feels emotion, he's still got his body. He used to be a, a conductor, a musicologist. And he went to, I think he directed choirs. He went to direct, his wife took him to his choir and he was able to, to direct the music. And that was fine. But then of course he got back to the, back home and didn't remember, remember it, doing it. Oh, wow. at all. And then there are other people who, who like lose, you know, we talked about this before, this kind of phantom limb and somatoparaphrenia. So yeah. their experience of the body has changed, but the rest of it. It's still the same. Still, other people have out of body experiences. So, so there's no, like the self that we all experience, most of us, most of the time, and it isn't a thing. It's just this kind of weave of, of processes, like at different levels, like the body, the first person perspective, the sense of free will, the, the set of memories, the social self, like you mentioned, you know, your network of friends, part of the experience of being somebody is how we perceive those around us, mm. perceiving us, like our minds are refracted through the minds of others. and that shaped and all of these things seem to we don't notice that it's this kind of combination of all that we just feel like yeah I'm me <laughs> but they all can come apart and the brain is always weaving them together so you can lose aspects and others others remain I know it, but I can't I can't I can't hold the feeling of noticing it sometimes mm -hmm. like I noticed that with social media how people's brains perceive other phantom people that they're not even sure are even there, mm. are perceiving them, and how it makes them act and blah, blah. But then as I'm thinking about it and I'm trying to work out what's going on, I lose, it's because it's there's something I can't write down, it's something I can't keep track of. I lose the feeling and I lose I lose it. But then you know, as you're speaking, I think I, it all comes back to me like, yeah, I remember thinking that, I remember thinking this. But I can't keep it, I can't keep track of how I'm feeling. The same way, like I said to you, when you said something, it made me realize I thought about that before. Who am I? And also, it's a bit like, not sad, but it's weird. But it's kind of sad, but it makes me not not care, but I don't, I'm, my fear of like, of mortality kind of goes because I also think I haven't been here for longer than I have been here. You know what I mean? The, the Earth's factually been here for billions of years. There's, there's millions of years of history we've got recorded of yeah. humans and whatnot. And I wasn't here for none of it. I was generally, and I was under general anesthetic. I was not here at all. And then my consciousness came here. And then now all I care about is my consciousness and like how me, me. And I think, you know what? It's not even about me. And all it is about is that while I'm here, enjoy it, do as many good things as you can, find out as much as you can, enjoy it. This is, it's amazing that you get to be here and experience it and that all the things go off in your head and you get to have all these emotions and whatever, whatever. Pass it on if you can as well and let them know that they've got the same fate as you. And then, yeah, and like I said, I was, I'm, I, I'm, I'm good with the end of life. But I am still as interested in why being feels like 
it feels like yeah. like why existing feels like how it feels like and is is existence this uh experience is there some truth some like some uh, like some uh holy truth to this feeling if you know what i mean is there some real truth to this feeling of mm. existing and experiencing or is it an amalgamation of everything going on in my brain and is that why because other beings, other like how conscious is a what's the smart animal? You know what I mean? Dolphin. Dolphin. How mm. conscious is a dolphin? Yeah, I mean maybe yeah, you know, it's it's differently conscious, isn't it? Because I think this is where the idea of putting everything, giving a single number, is is probably wrong. Because you don't you don't say this about life. You don't say is a dolphin more alive than a person? No. You know, there's okay. just different ways of being alive, and and I think there are different ways of being conscious too. So dolphins. You know, they might not have as much like abstract thinking that that we do, or language or stuff like that. Although they might have some language, but they might experience. Their, I mean, they have sonar, right? They can yeah. they they experience a completely different. Yes, I was going to say that we're, we're limited to our senses as well. Yeah. yeah. So we're conscious via our senses. Yes. Like you said, somebody could be. What do we say? People were. Uh, whether they've got a limb missing, so that's the touch Phantom of that limb, part, yeah. yeah. Mm. Or whether somebody's partially blind, partially sighted, or they're totally blind, or, you know what I mean, someone's totally deaf. Like, their consciousness is still as strong as ours. Sometimes they get stronger in other areas. Sometimes they get stronger senses in other areas. But they are they are limited to their senses, how many senses they have, you know what I'm saying? So, but then there's animals that have other senses. That's what I... I, don't, I, don't, I remember I was going to say this when we was leaving Dream Machine, but I didn't get to say it. That we... Like... How can I put this into words? As humans, we always think that we are, or we, like we are it, like we are the ultimate. I can't put yes, it into words. Of course like we what, yeah. we, what we are is it, yeah. you know what I mean? Like when we thought the world was flat, that's it. When we think the world is in the center of the universe, that's it. And then when you realize we're not, well, even though we're not in the center of the universe, we're still it. Like, yeah, it's about basically, us. you're saying that you feel like people feel that, that we are we're the center. Of the life universe. is us. Yeah. We are, we are yeah, what life cool. We yeah, are we, what, it's me, it's what it like means to be alive. Human exceptionalism. We think we're yeah. special and central, yes. and we yeah. always have. And yeah, you're right. Whether it's Copernicus, like we're, we're that is individualism the, the, as well. The, the amazing thing about that is that the view of being at the center of things is always, in the end, less beautiful than the view that supersedes it. So when we thought we were at the center of the universe, and now you know, that that universe was small compared yeah. to the one we know about now, and we're somewhere on the edges or whatever. But the sense of awe and wonder, like that, uh, faced with the universe that we now know about, is so much grander mm. than the one where we were at the center and there are a few things spinning around. And I think the same. And then the next one was like Darwin. So okay, we're. We're, at, we're different from other animals. And then Darwin comes along with his theory of evolution and says, no, you're not. You know, every, every form of life is related to every other. We have share most of our DNA with a banana or something. Yeah. And, um, and that picture of life, that doesn't reduce the beauty of it, being yeah. human. Yeah, it increases the beauty of being human. And I think the last, the next, or, or we're going through another transition like that. So for the last few hundred years, there's been this idea that human consciousness is special, that we have these rational minds that are somehow closer to God than to, mm. to other animals. Mm. And that's now what makes us distinctive. But again, I think, and we haven't got there yet, but I'm pretty confident that as we understand that consciousness too is shared by other animals and it's part of nature, it's not something separate from nature, that the view we get by making us again less special it's actually gonna increase our sense of connection and with everything else and wonder with everything else i know you've been sick bro <laughs> like, honestly <laughs> we, we could easily i've got so much i could go on for so time i was gonna talk, just now you reminded me i was gonna talk about animals that see themselves in the mirror for the first time yeah. oh, oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, i saw a mad um video of massive a, mirrors a, 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 gorilla yeah they put like a um a big mirror in like just in their natural habitat yeah and yeah. they were just spazzing like they were at first, they don't at first yeah. it was like gorillas really don't like making eye contact yeah that's, that's it as well was, yeah the problem was yeah they it? were like we're all going past yeah. them yeah, yeah. so they, they can't even check if it's them because they yeah. don't want it they, exactly they, they, they're so conscious that something's there straight away like yeah. okay cool 
Because uh, they always tell you as well, if you ever see one, they, they do sometimes say like, don't try not to have eye contact mm. with these things. Or yeah, whatever, fortunately, I don't kinda... see them very often. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, is there anything that anyone needs to know about? So like, and it could be, it could be a film, it could be a book you've read, it could be... In relation to any, the podcast today, or just anything. It could be anything. Can anything. I, can I say it, two well, things? Go for it. So what, actually, can you bring one up? There's what, so we talked a lot about... He's, um, yeah, he's gone. This no. idea about perceptual differences, like the, we all experience the world differently. Yeah. And so I have this with my with my colleagues. I have this project called the Perception Census. Mentioned it very briefly, where we're trying to measure how these differences are. Like how differently do we each mm. experience things? And this is still going on. And it's something anybody can do from home if they have a computer. We can't do it on a phone, but if you've got a computer, you can take part and oh, you can. Sick get involved you can it's like a series like like some of the illusions we've been talking about it's a series of small little fun illusions and interactive little things that help us that people experience in different ways and if you take part you'll learn a bit about what we've been talking about a bit about perception and your own way of perceiving and you'll also really help us because we we're trying to get as much Data is possible. Don't worry. We don't. We don't sell it. We don't do anything. What's weird it called? What's it called? It. It's called the Perception Census, and I'll um. The Perception Census. We'll pull it. We'll get it on the screen you, now. Oh. We'll, we'll get it in the edit. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's we've got we've had about twenty thousand people take part already. So it's already one of the biggest um, psychology experiments like this. So we're trying to make it a really landmark yeah. study and paint a picture of something that's been really hidden until now. The, really these these inner differences. It's mirror. Sure. What is it, sorry? It's um perception se it out census. That's it. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, okay. Dream machine. So, part. so it's part of Dream Machine. Yeah. It's, we we worked with the same team to do it. Oh, and okay. it's really because everyone in the Dream Machine has a different experience this is taking this out out of the dream machine into the world that we all experience things differently right. um, all the time so that's that's one thing it'd be amazing if, if people were inspired to to have a go it doesn't uh, take well it, it takes quite a long time when you do it all but you can do it in stages and even if you just do half an hour it's still really valuable for us say no more any what another thing Did you well I, I don't know so do you, i have this book myself which you hope you are going to talk about yeah. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> it's right here being you um do you want to break it down a little bit uh so it really covers what we've been talking about it's 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 a bit my sort of perspective on on consciousness and what it means to be you what it means to be a self so we talk about how to, what consciousness well. is how to measure it anesthesia um perception controlled hallucination psychedelics the self like what a self is all these interesting conditions that we talked about other animals okay what do we have free will that's another big one oh we i love that question today. we didn't go on that one either and <laughs> do um, we we, it depends what you mean by free I will. Definitely we have all the free will we need, which is not the free will some people want us to have. That's another pod episode. Though. And then it finishes with um, machines and artificial, because there's so much going on in really AI that as well, these yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. And like, are we going to be surrounded by conscious robots that try and take over the world? Can we upload our, our minds to the cloud? No, well, ever, well, no, no, no I've got to do that. I've will they ever? Really, that was actually in my notes. Will they ever really be conscious as well? Because the, the AI, I've got one on my, I've got one I use on my phone, the uh, ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah. It just predicts. Yeah. The next word in the sentence is going to tell you by what you've given it and what it's getting from its database. It just predict. That's all it's doing is predicting the next word. Simplest thing ever, but it comes across so intelligent because that is basically what your brain is kind of doing as well, predicting what's going to happen next. Well, that's an open question. Well, that's that's what they're saying. That's, your brain is doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they're, 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 they're kind of predict. They're, they're, they're saying that your brain is kind of predicting what's going to happen next right. in any situation. Whether you're walking through a door into a studio, whether you're getting out your car, whether you're, whatever you're doing in life, it's taking a sip of tea from. You're predicting what's, how hot it's going to be, how heavy it's going to be. Like your brain's constantly predicting everything, and right. it gets it right. It thinks okay, and it it uses that in in life and as you go as you go along. So yeah, I've got it on my phone where I can ask it anything, and we we can sit and have like hours of fun all ages so I can be with my friends I can be with my daughter I can be with anyone we'll just be asking it questions and think, being amazed at what it comes back with 
amazed. It can lie mm. though, but it doesn't know it's lying. Uh, yeah, that's oh, the main problem. Like, yeah. That's diff- yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. What do you think about that though? What do you think about um, being able to trans to take our consciousness and pull it into some form of data? I don't think it will happen. I, I don't. I I think it'd be a massive gamble. I wouldn't take that gamble because there there it basically assumes that consciousness is, a, is like some kind of data, right? Or some kind of information. And it might not be like that at all. So we use computers a lot to simulate what happens in brains. And we could imagine doing that at, at increasing levels of detail. So we might have like some future like massive computer that simulates every brain cell and how it's connected. Will that computer then be conscious? Will it have the experience of being me or, or you or whoever's brain we're, we're simulating some people just assume that if the simulation was accurate enough then the answer would be yes I don't think that's necessarily true because some things like if you we have computers that play chess very well now they actually play chess they don't just simulate playing chess they play chess and you, they can beat everybody now mm. but we have other kinds of things like weather systems we use computers to simulate mm. the weather and however accurate a simulation of a storm is, it never gets wet and windy inside the computer. It's always just a simulation. We wouldn't expect it to get wet and windy. Mm. So the question is, is consciousness more like playing chess or is it more like rain? And I think it's more like rain. I don't know for sure. No, nobody knows these things for sure. But um, the, the, the story that gets told in, in my book um, and this is just like the way I've, I've come to think of these things over the last 20 plus years, is that consciousness, at least human consciousness, is, is intimately related to the fact that we are living creatures. And you said it before, like what, what, what brains generally do, they, they keep us at the same body temperature, they keep mm. us alive. I mean, that's what evolution designed brains for. They didn't mm. design brains to make music to be a computer. or to yeah, exactly. or to yeah. do whatever. Yeah, yeah. They design, evolution designed brains to keep the body alive. alive and there's no, if you look in a brain, you know, you don't find this sort of division between the the, the mindware and the wetware like you yeah. have between the hardware and the software. And yeah, the computer. RAM, keyboard, mouse, mm. yeah, it's not it like doesn't, that. It doesn't yeah. work like that. So, so just taking one bit of it and then simulating it, I don't think you get consciousness that way. I think you get a simulation of it, but that, the experience, much like anesthesia, would just go. Mm. So I, I am not going to upload myself to the cloud. Yeah, no. Soon. I agree with everything you said, and I wish I could say it like that. I, I can't. If someone <laughs> asks me, the way I would answer that question will be s- ten seconds yeah. of just nah. Computers can never do what we do with our brain. Like our brains are smad. Like you know, what I'm saying when I'm, I, I would go for anything else. It wouldn't make there's as much sense. There's just way too much, much nuance and grey area for that we don't even but know. What, what and e- and even, and even, even if we, even if, like you said, even if somebody could break down your brain to 25 billion pieces and have 25 billion computers compute every single piece, and it makes an, an identical robot of you walking and talking and doing everything, it isn't being it isn't it isn't it isn't it still don't have it, your soul it, not even a soul it's like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have no soul yeah it doesn't, it doesn't have it doesn't have I don't know what to call it you know what I mean it's, it's not conscious it's just I like the idea of soul by the way and you know, there's a sort of well, idea that you know hard nosed neuroscientists will just think you know there's nothing to this this is like an old religious concept well I don't know but, sorry sorry to interrupt you but like I mean I've always just been trying to understand what it is I, I even what I was saying before like I don't know I was just trying to make an understanding of what that actually is. I've seen so, mm. unfortunately, I've seen so many dead bodies, yeah, mm. in different he's dynamics. He's a gangster, he's a gang. No, 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 I'm not j- even j- that. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> but like, but like, I'm like, you know, one of the reasons why I choose not to like look at open coffins and stuff like that anymore is because I've seen enough to know that like, by the time that it's open, it's like, like there's something yeah. that's not them there anymore. And I can't work out what that actually is. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course they're dead. But when you see somebody that has died immediately, to somebody who has died, maybe even maybe even twelve hours later, there's something significantly mm. different. But death is a process, right? It's not just an instant. You know exactly. Event. You don't just right. You know, so things take time. Other things like when when the brain finally stops, then consciousness is gone. But other things in the body 
Yeah, they keep going on for a little bit. Also, we don't know, either I'm making this up, <laughs> but we don't know yet if you can bring someone back to life. Is that a, is that a hundred percent given that if someone's died, because obviously you can, because people, people like people say that they have people died, died people do that, people yeah. do die. There's a footballer that died wow. on the pitch, wasn't it? And they brought him back to life. Yeah, what? didn't didn't Eric? Well, Eric's 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 almost, it's unclear. Almost died. But that's the thing, because the, the the definition of, of, of death, death has yeah. changed. Usually, depending on whether people can be brought back to life or not. So I think soon, Anastasia, Anastasia is dead. Back, back to life is that all? Oh, that wasn't. That's not dead then. Yeah. So so how do we know that with a welding machine? And two mushrooms that you, as long as you ain't been dead for two hours, under two hours, a welding machine and two mushrooms yeah. bring you back. Imagine if, imagine if that does. Imagine if that does bring you back. You clip the welding machine to their toe, you spark them on to the head with the, with the thing, and you, then you give them mushrooms and they come back. Then, you know what I'm saying? Then, then your perception of, oh, see, it's a dead body, because I've never seen a dead body, but I have seen loads of newborn children, loads of newborns. I've seen everyone all of my uh, nieces, nephews, and my own, and I've seen people when they've had their babies, and it's like, a new life being brought to the planet and it's like the, the 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 I don't know you know what I mean like knowing that just a baby scan or whatever two cells a sperm cell and egg cell whatever multiplies 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 to some living thing then all of a sudden now it's experiencing and then all of a sudden they become four or five year old and they start asking you for, and they start having their own personalities and they start having, and everything that's going on in their brain starts developing into a personality what we what we perceive as a personality of a conscious person mm -hmm. like I'm more sure that my daughter who is four years old is a hundred percent alive and experiencing than this chat GPT thing that has mm -hmm. been worked on by millions of people all over the world they can't convince me that that's real but I'm so sure that this four year old person this do you know what I mean mm -hmm. like it Real consciousness is so apparent and so, I don't know, natural mm -hmm. that I, can't, I don't think that you could just make a computer screen that's going to make me think that it's conscious. Because like you said, consciousness, main goal isn't telling you how far the moon is, isn't telling you how well. to put oil back in your car and all these things we've done on the planet. It's about being alive. I'm more likely to believe a tree is conscious than... A intelligent robot if you know what I'm saying it's, a, it's more about keeping mm. keeping alive and being here and experiencing rather than trying to prove something trying to be smart trying to be intelligent and that's yeah. another I mean that's another thing this, this tendency of, of humans to put ourselves at the centre of things and make ourselves special there's been this history of associating consciousness with intelligence oh yeah that's... Like people will say that, that you know if they're looking at other animals they'll say well you know they'll sort of say They'll start using intelligence as a surrogate proxy for Ain't whether they're bollocks. conscious or not. I think it's bollocks. No, I think I think um, consciousness <laughs> and intelligence are very, <laughs> are very, very yeah, different yeah. things. Yeah, it's true. And you don't, you know, like again, it comes back to brains are for keeping us alive. Like the fundamental, the most important experiences we have are things like pain, pleasure, um, disgust, th things that that are very visceral very body related like how how well are things going in this project of continuing to exist yeah when you eat food how you, you feel you don't have to be very smart to experience pain or pleasure right. that, yeah. that's 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 something very basic very fundamental so this whole trajectory of, of ai you know building these chat gpt whatever's they're not even that smart yet they just predict things mm -hmm. but even if they did become very smart and were able to actually know when they were lying speaking rubbish or not there's no sort of threshold at which suddenly the lights come on and consciousness happens yeah it's never going to go okay now it's so smart we've got a new chip now it knows yeah. how uh, chicken korma tastes <laughs> it's never going to understand how it feels to eat yeah, food it's it's or you. yeah it's told you but it's never going to it's yeah, never going to it, it's never going to uh, yeah. I don't know the word it's yeah, never it going to be it's yeah. never going to it's never going to yeah, it's never gonna, yeah. Do you, just very, very, very lastly, yeah, in your yes. book, do you um, deep dive into VR and like help, like trying to understand how that helps you understand consciousness? A little bit, yeah. So, I mean, the book, I should also say, it's, it's, written, it's written for general audience. It's not written for other neuroscientists. It's written for everybody. It's not, it's not written for the mind like mine, but... <laughs> 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 it's, it's I, have, I have my mum kind of read it as yeah. a sort of okay. test um, and yeah we do talk about 
VR. I do talk about VR a little bit. No, not a not a whole lot, but it is a it's a method that we've been using in my lab for oh, a good ten years as well. And it's what is your take? That it's it's always been this technology that seems to be just around the corner still. Um, I think to the extent that it still involves wearing a box on your face, mm. it's never gonna reach its full potential. And when it does, and I think it will at some point, you know, become sufficiently miniaturized. It'll like, be like a form of a contact lens. Then, yeah, then all bets are off. And, and it'll be like all of these things we've talked about, whether it's AI, whether it's longevity stuff, there's good aspects and bad aspects to it. It's, there's always been this worry that new technologies are gonna really mess around with our psychology. You know, whether it's kids playing games, video games, or, or way back, people worried about this with the TV. In fact, people worried, and this seems insane to me now, when books first appeared, like hundreds of years ago in, in Germany, when people first started publishing books, there was a worry that books would reduce people's intelligence because it would stop them thinking and remembering for Memorizing themselves. Things. And this seems crazy in hindsight, right? How yeah, could books enough. be be a, a, you know, a stupidity factor yeah. and we've often been wrong when being worried about new technology but I think the pace of change is, is itself accelerating and a lot of our psychological stability does depend in some way in being able to distinguish what's real from what is not and if immersive technologies make that boundary sufficiently blurred that even kids who grow up with that technology still get confused, then I think we're in some trouble. Mm. No, I hear that. And I think also one of the biggest problems here is that regardless of whatever the new thing is, mm -hmm. is that like everything is so much about capitalism here that if you get people... You'll always find someone that will find an alternative way to do certain things that will help benefit them, and it won't be the place from it won't be a place of greater good. It will be a, a place from capitalizing somewhere down the line. And if you're doing that with people's brains yeah. and their consciousness, then we're fucked. I mean, social media is already doing that. Yeah. But but it's again, it's not a universally a bad. It's not by definition a bad thing. No. Social media, nor is VR, nor is machine learning. It's just we've got to be mindful and use and not just leave it to companies to make as much money as they can. We've got to make sure there's there's social good happening as well, and it's possible. Well, anyway. I'm optimistic. Well, anyway, it's a gift. Oh, skincare for the man. Oh, yeah. Love, man. <laughs> love, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to them. Shout out to Yeah. It's self care for the man, though, for real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like skincare. It's vegan <laughs> as well. Pop vegan. stuff. Um, and it's actually genuinely what I use as well. Get complimented on my skin all the time, man, I say. But, um, and they all thank you for coming. I massively, massively, massively appreciate it. Um, and Got Jamie. Book. Yeah. Got to read that book, boy. Oh ah, yeah, and love for the logo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah compliments yeah, yeah. on the new logo that. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we changed <laughs> the logo. He created that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the instrumental as well. You're gonna start hearing the instrumental and in that. That's Jamie as well. You know what I mean? Or oh, we got we got to tidy it up and thing. And yeah, yeah, of course, we've of course. Got to do all of that. But bro, I appreciate you, my bro. I love bro. Um, and you know what? Remember, we was doing this thing before. It was like one time a year and that. Then you missed out a whole year. I know. Because. Well, that was my fault because obviously he was doing the branding, Everything, and yeah. I just thought, nah, let's like let me just wait until we change the branding and that. But well, even prior to that, you said let's stop doing the year thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now that's dead now. Yeah. So boom, it might even be all four or five times. This I'll be year. back. Don't worry, man. Yeah. I'm here. Um, and Sheila, thank you for you know what I mean. She's been a thank she's, you. Thank she's you. part of the team. Yeah. She's part love, of the team. Love. So more often than not, when you see these type of episodes happening, it's from her work. We might even, uh, do you know what? Might even just give you a young that like, email address and that to tell people, listen. Like, if you've got something interesting, I've got someone who's gonna vet you and make sure that you know what I mean. Because some people say, "Oh, like, oh my God, Chucks, I want to talk about this, that," and, but they ain't got shit to talk about. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Or they might actually do, but then they can't 
they can't deliver it yeah. though. And if they're not even able to do it like on a via email or conversation or whatever, then it don't make sense. So um but yeah, you're down, yeah. Alright, cool. Thanks for listening everyone, yeah? Love. Love.